What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 14 of the Reunion of Final Fantasy VII Remake podcast. I am your host, Kairosis, and joining me once again today, I have my incredible co-host, Viz. How are you doing, Viz? I'm doing, I don't know, <laughs> a little bit weird today, <laughs> but it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Just bear with me if I kind of lose my brain uh, at some point. <laughs> but yeah, other, other than that, I'm pretty good. No illnesses, no COVID, no nothing. So it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And how are you today? I'm doing good. I've just been spending a little bit more time outside because the weather's been really good. So I've been trying to get out more and doing some stuff around the yard and stuff at home and just cleaning my house, which mm -hmm. is a huge task. So, and then also trying to enjoy my second play through this game and then finding time to um, also do all my work. It's, it's a lot, but um, I'm just... I am really glad that we're able to sit down today to continue and just kind of finish off our complete spoiler cast. So if you guys don't already know Viz, he is the creator of the Cosmo Canon Observatory YouTube channel. He does amazingly detailed analysis videos on the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So Viz, did you want to talk a little bit about what you do? Yeah, it's just really short because most of you probably already know about my content, but as uh, Karosi said, it's very detailed analysis videos. Usually I have a few other things like chronologically cut uh, trailers and some other uh, discussion videos. But right now it's a little bit on hold because I still need to finish up uh, uploading my complete mm -hmm. FF7 remake playthrough. And this also takes a lot of time away. And this week I'm pretty on uh, low on my battery, so I need to charge them up again. Mm -hmm. But I hope to get the next video out before the end of May which will cover the ending and the story as a whole. That's awesome. I can't wait to see all of your content that you have uh, planned to be released for this game. Oh, too and much. <laughs> I obviously appreciate you taking the time to be here with me on the podcast um, so often. So I really appreciate that. So thank you. No worries. I just wanted to go ahead and shout out to everybody who's listened and subscribed to the podcast so far. So we're both super appreciative of everybody taking the time to listen and spread the word. Uh, so some people have been asking about the best way to support us here on the podcast. So the best way that you can support us right now is honestly go and like and sub the podcast and share the podcast as much as possible. So that's the best way that you can help support us. So for today, what we're going to be doing is we are continuing on with part two of our in-depth spoiler discussion. So we will be talking about the characters, for example, their personality interactions, uh, moments between the characters, and a little bit of how they were faithful to the original Final Fantasy VII. We'll be talking about our thoughts on the story and events of the remake in comparison to the original. All right, so first of all, we are talking about the characters. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little bit about my own opinions about the characters. And I know that I did talk a lot about this on our previous <laughs> episode as well, a little bit interspersed, I guess, because obviously it was a little bit less formal. So we were kind of talking um, about, you know, the multiple things about this game um, as we went through. So uh, for the characters, I honestly loved all the characters. Um, the, in the main party, and I talk a lot about this previously, about how, you know, Barrett sometimes is a lot to handle and people kind of misunderstand him as a character, as being, I guess, somebody that's just, you know, always, he's always at 100%, I think, but he's also really concerned about the safety of the planet. So he's a lot to handle and a lot to take in at times. And some people just took that as... I guess, like bad voice acting or just bad script or something. But for me, I kind of understand him as a character. I understand where he's coming from. And I have a lot of people that, like I said previously um, in my life, that are kind of remind me of this character. Either, you know, they're at zero or they're at 100. You know, mm -hmm. there's like no happy medium between, <laughs> between that. And I can understand, you know, where he's coming from. And I really do like the interpretation of this character in the remake. For me, uh, his reaction to the plate fall after the plate fell and they're having that conversation together where the rubble is around them and he's kind of punching at the rubble was really emotional for me. And I loved that part of that character in that in that like situation, like how he reacted to that um, really kind of put me over the edge uh, emotionally. So it was a lot to take in, but I loved that um, that part 
of his character in the remake. About Tifa, I do love Tifa as a character in the original, and I love the fact that she is... She's this strong woman character, and for, you know, a time in 1997 when this game came out, there weren't a lot of strong female characters in a lot of video games. Mostly, the female characters are like damsels in distress, you know, where it's like, oh, save me, I need help, or, you know, they just want the men to do everything. And Tifa is just not this type of character. And I I love that they still kept that in this game, and then they built upon it a little bit more. Um, where you know, she's just she's just kicking ass and taking names, right? Like she is honestly so strong and but yet she's still vulnerable too. And I love that so much about her. And I think that they really did an amazing job building on her as a character in this game as well. You know, we did get a little bit more insight from the uh, developer interviews about Cloud and how uh, when they were you know, thinking about Cloud as a character in the remake, a lot of people kind of misunderstood him as this kind of cool, like fashionable dude who's kind of just like kick ass and there wasn't really much depth there. But as the story went on in the original, we got a lot more insight about why he was acting the way he was in the original. But it does come out later that he's a flawed narrator, right? Where you can't trust everything that he's saying, basically. I think they did a really good job kind of re they didn't really reinvent him as character but i just feel like they gave us a good more depth i guess yeah like exactly like more depth around why he says what he says and he thinks a lot about i think his response in a lot of the social situations and before we're getting a lot of it we're getting a lot of that story in the voice acting as well like in the original it was just we're reading it through text right so that emotion behind the voice and that sort of thing wasn't in the original. So I think that we're getting a lot more depth and a lot more insight into his psyche in this game. And I love that. And I, I love Cloud as a character. I think he's probably my favorite Final Fantasy character. I do love a lot of the other Final Fantasy characters as well in, in general. But for me, I don't know. I love Red 13 as well, so it's really hard <laughs> uh, to pick. But um, And then, so talking about Red 13 as well, I talked about this on the last episode as well. I thought that they did a really good job with introducing him as a character in this game. And I know that a lot of people were um, upset that he wasn't going to be a playable character in this part of the game. But I think that they did a good job balancing him and letting him, you know, still act in combat. And, like, you obviously can't issue him any commands or anything like that. But I'm okay with it. I just love the fact that he was there. They kept him in the game. And he did give us a lot of insight, I think, about the story as well. Especially the story for the remake. Because we don't know where the story's going to go, right? Like, Not really. Yeah. <laughs> we're just kind of thinking about what is even, like... We'll talk about this a little bit later, but what actually happened in the story in this game, he does give us a lot of insight about, you know, the background um, when they first, when they're in that little room, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. at Shinra HQ and they're talking and then it shows like flashbacks from the ancients and that sort of thing. And just, he seems like he's so wise they did a really good job with that. Like he's wise beyond his years, you know, and he's kind of talking to the party and kind of, he's kind of like the voice of reason, I guess, where he's giving an explanation, but it's still kind of vague so that it's not giving too much away. I think to the point where it's not spoiling later installments of the game, I guess. I thought his voice acting was incredible. I just loved him as a character and uh Yeah. Avalanche as well. We've already talked a lot about Jesse and Biggs and Wedge and, uh, you know, their banter among themselves and also when they're in the group with everybody together. I love that. They just built on that comedy aspect a little bit more. And Jesse is super thirsty, right? Like she's, <laughs> she is so loving Cloud, right? Like she's into it. And, you know, that's, I don't blame her, you know, <laughs> like it's just, it's so, 
it's so amazing. I think they did a really good job giving us, I guess, a different look at Avalanche from just the original, how, you know, they were with, they were part of the original for such a short amount of time. Too short. And now, yeah, and now they've expanded on these stories. And I feel like you really do feel more for them as characters in the remake, I think, in my opinion, okay? So this is, these are my opinions about the game. So everybody's going to have different opinions, and that's totally fine. You don't have to agree with me. But in the original, when you're playing through, they're not, they're with you for so short of a time that you don't really get any, you don't get a lot of character development. So Mm. when they die, you don't, it doesn't feel as impactful for me as it did when I played through this game. And we don't know, obviously, where the story is going because obviously the ending scene when, you know, we see uh, Biggs and he's in bed and we see Jesse's glove. We don't know if she's dead or not, but still, like, just experiencing her kind of giving up and she's just exhausted and she's done, but also she's hurt. Like, I was really sad. I, I felt something, you know, when playing through the original, I can't say that I felt anything until later i think when you learn more about the story because at the beginning you're kind of like oh who are these people i don't know but all i know is that i gotta get out of this reactor because it's gonna blow up right like you're just (laughs) i don't know that was my thought process when i'm playing and there's so much coming at you at once and so much text to read that you're just kind of like trying to figure out what's happening when you play the original and I, I liked the addition of the a lot of the NPCs. Like we talked about the teacher. I thought that she was a great uh, character and that we saw her as well in Wild Market. And it shows that, you know, she's not just this one note NPC character that's just there and just populating the world. Like she's also trying to, you know, she's trying to pursue her dream of being a dancer, which is why she's a honeybee girl. But also she still, you know, needs to work and she's, doing the best that she can in sector five to help those children. And, you know, and that's, that's a lot for an NPC character, you know, like a lot of games, they just create NPCs. You go either quest giver, you talk to them and then that's it. You know, like there's no depth there. And I enjoyed that. And, and the kids as well. We, I talked about this. I think that they did a great job with their voice acting and just doing the side quests for the kids and seeing how the children are reacting to everything that's happening around them is incredible. And, you know, because it's not just adults that live in this world, you know, there's Mm -hmm. children as well. And just to get to see how the children, how it's affecting the children was, was, uh, I thought it was pretty profound, actually. And I enjoyed that. It's like, it's not just like the kids are just there, you know, they're there, but also look at this little community that they've made (laughs) amongst each other as kids you know and they've created this mini game like they've created this (laughs) which to pass the time from the hard times and then they want you to be part of their group and you know it's just that's so awesome because in the original i just there were children that you could talk to as npcs but they didn't have a key role to play Uh, really in that story outside of marlene Outside of Marlene, Marlene right? Like that's, yeah. I guess that's the character that, who's a child that you can kind of, you feel for mm. in the original. But they, st- they even built more on, uh, on that as, as Marlene as well. But they also gave us Betty. Mm-hmm. You know, they gave us Betty as well, where, you know, you're finding her cats. And I felt bad for her as well, just for losing her cats. I, I did. <laughs> I couldn't find them all, so it was the last one was super annoying to find, but I uh I appreciated the children a lot as characters in 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 this game. It's I find found it quite interesting that there's a, a really small emphasis on children in Sector Seven. There are a few mm-hmm. around and they That's have true. NPC dialogue, like the passerby dialogue. But besides Betty and Marlene, there's no one you can directly interact with. And in uh, Sector 5, it's completely different, which I really like because mm-hmm. it, you see the different dynamics in different sectors, like how they live and how they work and how the community is built. I find it quite good. Yeah. Same, th- same with the cats. Uh, the Sector 7 is extremely <laughs> overrun with cats. And in Sector 5, it's practically no animals, I think. 
mm -hmm. practically nothing. So it's uh, yeah, kind of dichotomy between between those two sectors. Mm -hmm. And like I think Aerith has a special connection with children, right? Yeah. And that could be why. I don't know, I, this might not have anything to do with it, but there seems like there's more children in Sector 5, which is where Aerith lives. You know, so she's pr probably known those children for longer, and she has a special mm. connection with those, with those children. And they do talk about Aerith as you're going through as, as well, right? And they say hi to Aerith. When you first go there, mm. like, they're saying hi to her. They're not saying hi to you. They don't know who you are as Cloud, right? Yeah until later when you've kind of made a name for yourself. And then the kids are like, oh, we want you to be part of our group. We want to be as cool and as strong as you are. But when you first go there, they're like saying hi to Aerith. And it's like she's kind of like this celebrity <laughs> <laughs> that kind of lives there, you know? And also she's bringing flowers to the teacher in the school. And yeah, I thought they did a really amazing job with that. I thought that was awesome. I have a feeling that's because of the theme of Sex Sector 5, because of Aerith. Because she, mm -hmm. she's probably the reason why there are so, much, there are so many flowers growing. And mm -hmm. this means growing life. And children also represent that, growing that's life true. again. So it's probably yeah. a, a parallel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in Sector 7, I it's think... just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> people, yeah exactly. people get by and uh, ward off monsters. That's about it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think Betty is in Sector 7, right? Yep. Like, she's at the school, right, in Sector 7? Or there's a little area, I can't remember. Playground. If it's the yeah, it's like the playground, right? And then she's, you know, she's lost her cats and yeah. stuff. But I feel like the kids seem a lot happier in Sector 5. Oh, yeah, definitely. Than they do in, in Sector 7 when you first get there. And it's more alive, like you said, with the vegetation and everything. But that's because of Aerith, right? And mm. Her influence, I think. And... Obviously, you see all the flowers growing by her house, right? And she's obviously, like, giving those flowers, which represent life and all of that, mm. to the people that live in Sector 5. So it seems like maybe they're a little bit happier than Sector 7. Mostly. Um, yeah. I talked a little bit about Marlene, so I thought that she was an incredible um, character in this game. And... I just loved seeing that connection between her and Barrett, right? And you go in and I did the same thing that you did when I went to the seventh heaven the first time and you can choose who you want to talk to. <laughs> I talked to Marlene first because she's amazing as mm -hmm. a character and then Barrett freaks out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then she's like hiding away or whatever. But the, 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 um, the connection between Barrett and Marlene mm -hmm. is so sweet. The, their interaction yeah. is... Barrett becomes a completely different person when he's talking to her. It's so cool. He does. Yeah. It's kind of like he, she kind of like tames him a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> when he gets Sorry? more sensitive and more softer and um, when he's talking to her, right? <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, when someone uh, scares her or something like that, then he gets angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, zero or a hundred. Yep. yep. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not sure where I stand on Chadley, really. I, I, I like him as, like, how they incorporated him into the game. Um, and it's pretty cool, like, you go to him and then you do the VR uh, missions, right? So he gives mm -hmm. you, like, this high-tech VR headset and you just put it on. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, when I first got to him and I had that unlocked, I was like, what? VR missions? Like, do I need a VR headset to play <laughs> these? Like, oh, what? Like, I thought it, it might have been maybe, like, a PlayStation um, VR headset, like, side quest that you can just do if you want to do VR stuff. Um, but I'm not too sure, like, ha they didn't really give him that much story, so, and we talked about this before, like, how kind of we wanted, if there's new characters, we wanted them to feel like they were meant to be in this world, because they, they've created that kind of story, and it's not just, like, they're just, like, pasted there, you know, for no reason, they're just there. Mm -hmm. We did get a little bit from about his background but we didn't get that much but i'm interested to see where this is going to go in the future installments like is he going to be in the other in the other games are mm. we going to get more 
background from Chadley. Um, and did you do, did you complete all the battle intel missions? Not yet. I still have to beat okay. spoilers, the, 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 the last and best um, summon, Bahamut. Okay. I still need to beat him. Um, but I have been spoiled a little bit about his true nature, but I have no idea what okay. actually happens. I just know what he is. Yeah, I haven't finished them either, but yeah, I I was spoiled because, like I said, I was listening to the uh, Easy Allies spoiler when I was driving, and I couldn't stop it. Right, I enough. skipped it, and then I just <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, I skipped it. I turn it on while I'm driving, but you can't like my screen on my phone mm. like doesn't turn mm. off because I don't have YouTube Premium, so I'm driving. Ah, and I'm like, see, oh yeah. god, and I just wanted to like pause it, but I didn't want to be distracted while I was yeah, driving, sure. so I just. Tried to tune it out, but anyway, we get you get a little bit more about Chadley's background later when you complete all the battle intel missions. Yeah. For those of you that didn't finish yet, but it's pretty interesting. Um, we'll see where it goes um, with with Chadley as a character. And uh, sorry, Madame M. And I, t I said this before. I loved Madame M. And, <laughs> and Chocobo Sam, and and they're kind of. You know, they do allude to, you know, there's a history there between yep. them, maybe a relationship, relationship or a fling or something. And I loved that. I loved that. And Madame M super, um, she's super funny. And she's kind of like the comedy relief in this game a little bit. A little bit, yeah, yeah. She's being sassy, but also she's just dishing it out, right? Like back and making these uh, comments back at the characters. And you're just listening and ha you're just experiencing it in real time, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes it's not, it's indirectly, you know, where she's being like, you're watching it and she's doing this to other people, um, how she's talking. And I loved that. There were so many times when I just laughed out loud, <laughs> like by myself in my living room, you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's nobody else experiencing this, but I'm still laughing out loud because I thought that she was actually hilarious. And I, I loved her as a character as well. And Leslie Kyle, um, I'm not sure if we really needed to go back to the sewers later. Like I, I, I didn't, we'll talk about this in the story, which yeah. is the next <laughs> thing we're going to talk about, but I'm not sure if it paid off like his story after in the sewers when, you know, we go down there and he's like talking about um, his girlfriend or whatever, right? His fiance, was it his fiance? Uh, fiance, yeah. Yeah. So they found like her necklace or something in the sewers, right? But yep. I was a little confused because I was like, wait, who is, who is she? Like, we don't really, we don't see her, right? We don't get any more background information about her. Only whatever we get through Leslie. Mm. Um, and for me, it was a little bit confusing to understand his motivations, I guess, to help the group. Yeah, it was a bit um, murky, I'd say, but you can infer what happened and yes. why he's like this. It's, it's a bit uh, not on the nose, which I sometimes like, because sometimes when you, yeah. in, uh, people spell everything out in uh, fiction, it's sometimes yes. a little bit annoying. So I yeah, found, found, exactly. it's, found, found it fine. It's, it's good. Well delivered. Yeah. I just think that we're going to get more of him in the future games because why would they introduce him as a character and then talk about his fiance and then there's nothing because we don't get a resolution to his storyline. Not really, no. In this game, it, we're kind of just left to kind of figure it out on our own, which is obviously this game has brought up a lot more questions than answers, you know, like it hasn't provided answers for every single thing. And I like that. That's what I like. Some people don't like that. Some people... Mm -hmm want everything tied up in a beautiful bow and yep. like here you go everything's completed i can feel good about what i did and now i feel happy and then they move on right but a lot of this game is still the ending like it's left up to interpretation and we're kind of left thinking about how do i feel about everything that i experienced and also about not getting those finished storylines but i'm one of those people where i like that and I'm interested to see where this is going to go with Leslie Kyle as a character. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with Kyrie. I thought that Kyrie was okay as a character. Uh, I liked her more when she's first introduced, when she's kind of on the stage and she's protesting. And then Barrett wants to go up to her and kind <laughs> of tell her the truth about everything. And then I forget who 
I think was it Tifa? I think Tifa tells him. Yeah. I can't remember who not it was, draw, but I think not to Tifa... draw attention. I think. Yeah, something. I think, and then also she's like, "Why would you waste your time?" You know, t- mm. telling her anyway because, and I liked that, but later on, I feel like it it doesn't pay off really because we see her again and then she's up to no good and she doesn't learn her lesson and then she kind of forces us well she doesn't force us but she kind of is like well you go do it like if you care so much about what i'm doing why don't you go fix it whatever i did (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh boy which is kind of like doesn't really make you feel for her as a character i felt like she wasn't grateful for what i did for her which is okay. And there's people that are like that in the real world, right? Like I have friends that I know that are kind of like that. They're not grateful. And they're kind of like, you know what? It's everybody else's problem to fix all of the issues in my life. And that's the type of people that they are, yeah, you know? And you just, you're like, you know, you just kind of, <laughs> but for me, like those, that type of personality, I, I don't kind of gravitate towards. Um, and that's okay. You know, this is just, like I said, my opinion about the character. And I'm hoping like Leslie Kyle will get more because I think that the, the, like, if you've read the Ultimania, which I read like the, some of the stuff that obviously has been circulating online and Leslie Kyle and Kyrie have a history um, working together. And I love that. And I think that they hopefully will build on that in the, in the next parts of the remake. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. I think that that would be super interesting. I think that Kyrie was more of a, it was more of a, um, I forget the word. <laughs> it's like a, anyway, she was more there, I feel like, f- for the reveal that Mireille is actually her grandmother, mm-hmm. and she's the, she's the uh, angel of the slums that we find out, as opposed to giving more background about Kyrie. Like, I feel like Kyrie was just a plot device yeah. for Murray for that reveal. And then that was close to the end too. So then we're kind of left like, oh gosh, like questioning, which is good. Maybe we'll see, maybe those characters will help us out in the future, you know, of this game. And people are thinking that Kyrie is Yuffie. I don't think so. No. no. <laughs> No, Kyrie exists in this universe. She's a character. Like, she's, it's not Yuffie. I don't think it's Yuffie. Oh, definitely not, no. Even, even if uh, Yuffie's theme plays in, in, in near the Sector 5 station where you get the mm-hmm. quest for her. So yes. it's, it's just a parallel. But, I think so, yeah. too, because she's, she's a thief. Yep. And so is Yuffie. So it's kind of like they're playing that up a little bit. That's what I got out of yeah. that, anyway. Exactly. That's pretty much it for characters that I wanted to say. So what do you think, Viz, about the characters? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, generally, I think they're extremely fleshed out. Like, practically each character we get, at least in uh, confined to the Midgar segment, of course, some characters will get much more characterization in the original game post-Midgar, which we don't get mm-hmm. here. For example, Palmer. He's a little bit underutilized, mm-hmm. but... Yes. In general, I'd say that they did a really, really good job on most of the characters, even the NPCs and the new NPCs, especially. Yeah. But for the main characters, it's hard to say which one I like the best, but <laughs> I think Barrett does take the cake in the, uh, in the long run, or uh, if you compare every single part of it, because he's, in the original, he's a good character, but kind mm-hmm. of one note most of the time, I think. Mm-hmm. Unless you uh, you take his whole backstory and the gold sauce support yes. into consideration. Exactly. This, this part is really good in the original. This is great. But outside of that, it's not too much about him. Maybe uh, the time when uh, Kate Sith or Ketchy um, <laughs> rags on about... Uh, his morals and that he did kill a lot of people and for what and blah blah. Those moments are really good, but here it's practically the whole game through. You see more and more and more about his character. You see his uh, fear of heights, that he's at some points really uncertain. And even in the first mission, that he's 
uh, putting on in the fr a front and putting on this mask of being uh, the cool guy and let's do this, let's do this, and oh, I get goosebumps and my heart's pounding like a jackhammer, and this is, he's really nervous there. You can, re you can uh, really feel it, even if he pretends he's not nervous. Because as, even in the second bombing run, when they're in chapter 6 and walking over this big pipe where all this exhaust wind is uh, blowing, blowing through, mm -hmm. he has a really hard time to go over there and uh, bring himself to ignore the height. And also jumping out of the train, he, he was there uh, hesitant too, and it's, it's so good. Mm -hmm. So he has yeah. his fears, his um, uncertainty covered by this pompous uh, presence. I'd say maybe Matt Pomp is not bad guy, but like someone who who is in control and is a leader. He tries mm -hmm. to be the leader, but he's really not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and and his uh, his mood shift when he's talk talking to Marlene, as we um, mentioned before. Yeah, there's so much nuance to his character, and also his his singing, his uh, victory <laughs> theme, and. The whole thing in uh, chapter 7 when he's um, like trying to hold his speech and Cloud says, uh, by the thousand guild they cut the feet, <laughs> or cut, cut the audio, <laughs> and uh, wanting to the others to, uh, to practice their victory poses for when they beat Airbus and blah blah blah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. He has so many more facets here in this remake. And also, after Plate Falls, as you mentioned, his his performance there is just so gut-wrenching and really mm -hmm. good. And how he's interacting with Tifa there and tries to console him and yes. no, it's not our fault, it's Shinra's fault. It's yeah. really good. And yeah, let's just uh, go over to Tifa. As you said, badass. Like practically <laughs> all the way through besides I think one point when uh, she's, she's hesitant um, when they need to jump out of the train. And then Cloud jumps out with her, protecting her. This was the only thing that I think it was cool, but it also raised an eyebrow because in the original she jumped first without any hesitation. Right but here, he she's uh, really hesitant and doesn't really want to jump. On all other occasions, I must say she's uh, she's a really good character and holds her own and can uh, kick mm -hmm. ass and. Punch, punch guys, especially in chapter 9 with uh, Don Corleo. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one was great. Yeah, and even yeah, this... like she didn't even need her help. No, Come on, let's no, be honest. No. Like, I mean, she's she gave herself up, right? Like, she wanted to go there and do mm -hmm. it on her own. Mm -hmm. She didn't even want, she had a plan. She was like, no, don't come. Don't come for me. I'll be fine. It's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we believe you. <laughs> and then we go anyway. Well, because Eris, Eris said so. Which makes yeah, sense on, exactly. on many levels. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I'm sure she would have kicked everybody's ass in there anyway. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Most likely. <laughs> but did you notice too, like in that, obviously like it's the story, right? It's like, come on, it's before it's time, right? Like in order to go and save her, like Cloud, it has to become a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, like he can't just go in and be like, I'm going to rescue you as the damsel in distress because I'm the man. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. You have to become a woman first before you can get in because it's like the women in this game are super strong characters, right? Like they're. Oh, yeah, they are. I love that. And also Cloud, even if, he, if he's really strong and could probably bash his way through and rescue mm -hmm. her without any problem. Well, he he would upset her because it would this would thwart yes. her plans. But Cloud is, uh, his character is really interesting, even in the original, but it didn't come across as well in, let's say, the first third or first half of the game. No, But exactly. here you, you see it all the time. He, mm -hmm. he puts this, this, this mask of uh, this cool mercenary who can do anything and everything. But deep down, he's just a 16-year-old old child or old teenager who doesn't yeah. really know how to... Uh, act around people and is, is a, a dork and can't really do a high five right the f first three times or something. <laughs> no, he's... Yeah, he's... Um, exactly. He's something else. And that's probably also why he didn't just uh, decide to to barge Well, in. he doesn't know who he is as a person, I don't think. That's too, yeah. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think he knows how to fit in. Like, mm. he doesn't know who he is as a person. The rest of these characters 
have existed and they've they know who they are i feel like they're stronger in knowing that about themselves and cloud is kind of just still figuring that out because yep. everything that he's been through as well you know we we find out later in the original like yeah. you know what i mean he's not who he says he is we don't know mm -hmm. and also it's revealed like about everything about zach and everything like that so he's just so confused and he doesn't know he doesn't yeah. know right and i think that they did a good job in communicating that as well like you said he's trying he's mm. it's like he's like watching to see yeah how how they want him to react mm. to the situation but then he's kind of making a choice to purposefully not react in a way that they expect him to so it makes him look like he's cool or something <laughs> yeah maybe. i don't know how else to explain it like yeah. it's like they they don't like they're expecting him to react a certain way, but he's like in his mind, like, oh, I, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say to this because I want them to, I don't want them to n expect how I'm going to react, right? Mm. I also need, need to uh, clarify something. Um, he, of course, Cloud is 21, he's not 16, but uh, due to stuff hap that happened before, like mm -hmm. in the past, he sort of uh, mentally is still in yes. the six, it's, uh, 16 years. Exactly. Uh, mindset, exactly. which mm -hmm. you, if you pay attention, you notice. You really notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like his maturity level. Yeah, he's not fully developed. Definitely like, into an adult yet. Yeah, I find it so interesting that in the first bombing mission, he really can show off and be the cool guy, but as time goes on, especially when around Tifa or Aerith, he mucks mm -hmm. up a few situations and needs rescuing himself. Especially this one scene in the sewers where the bridge yeah. breaks and he almost falls and then everything Tifa have to kind of save him and pull him up with uh, her pole. And then yeah. he, you really see he, he, he physically lets his, his head hanging for a few seconds, you know, oh, damn, now they think I'm, <clears throat> I'm some sort of, uh, I don't know, someone who can't, can't do anything right and now yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a burden and whatever. And his, his insecurity <laughs> kicks in hard. He yeah. even he even apologizes there, <laughs> so it's yeah yeah it's it's very very interesting. It's not the first time I think that, uh, a few other times too. Especially he didn't really need saving, but it kind of looks that way in uh, Don Corneo's chambers where he's there and the others come mm -hmm. here to his rescue. It's not really a rescue because Don Corneo is not really a match for him, but still, it's uh, it's a, a similar sentiment. So it's it's mostly Cloud who needs. Saving. He's not in distress, but still, still needs saving. I find it pretty yeah. cool because it it fits so much uh, to his to his character, his persona or fake persona, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good, good uh, well made. So many layers on each of those characters. Yeah, I agree. And Tifa, if you have played the original, you know that she is kind of. Uh, Chipper or well, um, well, not really chipper, but it's. She tries to um, to be of of a good mind and uh, cheer other people up usually. Yeah. But when something's bothering her, she usually doesn't say anything. She's just mm -hmm. keeping to herself. You also also notice that when uh, they have uh, they discuss in their hideout, Avalanche HQ hideout, which you can't go to, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, she leaves first and doesn't look at, at Cloud. Just goes behind the bar. Gulps down a drink, pours herself yeah. some water, and then sits down. You really see mm -hmm. oh, something went terribly wrong down there. <laughs> yeah, but then, exactly. Yeah, but then she uh, she she puts on a smile towards Cloud, and then when Barrett uh, tells her to uh, uh, pop a good one for a celebration or however he's uh, phrasing yeah. that, um, she immediately goes back to her um, happy self. So it's, yeah, she's really torn inside, but tries to be uh, positive on the outside. Mm -hmm. yeah, you also see this a lot in the original. But uh, yeah, it's, I find it, find it interesting. Also very interesting that she tries to dig deeper into Cloud and what uh, he did before, because she knows something is off, something's wrong. Even if uh, when, when he says, yeah, it's, it's been five years, but no, it's been seven mm -hmm. years. So 
she didn't this doesn't mention it, but uh, she knows that something is off about it, but she still needs to only observe because she doesn't want to like break something. Mm -hmm. You notice this uh, a lot more here. Of course, they need to because it's just one game in Midgar. So yes, they need to exactly. incorporate a few points that actually come later. So it's mm -hmm. because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Any. Yeah. yeah. And Aerith, she retained her, her OG persona to the fullest. She looks like this uh, holy girl who can do no wrong, yes. but she is uh, <laughs> so, so uh, spunky and sassy and knows what she wants and uh, yeah. gets her will through and everything. It's, it's really great. So good. But still, she, you notice that she's still living at home. Yes. She still has a mother. But the others, want, the others don't. Tifa is like two years younger, doesn't have parents, and, and it, it shows. She acts yeah. more independently. Aerith too, but you still feel this connection to home a little bit. Yeah. It's, I find this really interesting and uh, really good. So yeah, there's something else about Aerith, but we'll get to that in the uh, ending discussion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he also mentioned that Red 13 is awesome. He is awesome. Like, pure awesome. I can't think of anything that uh, annoys me or anything. It's, he's just pure awesomeness in this. The voice acting, how he moves, how he speaks, how he, how, how, how he fire fives Spirit's head. <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's so cool. And his grin when Barrett tells him, hey, just smile a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, please don't. Just keep it to that yourself. Great. Yeah. So many great moments. It's, it, it, there are so mm -hmm. many great moments between the characters, between, uh, between, between uh, as I said, Barrett and, and almost Tetanaki, <laughs> uh, Red 13, and Barrett yeah. and Cloud, because in, uh, in, at the start, they're kind of enemies or they tr don't trust each other. And they warm up to each other much more during the course of the course of the game. It's it's really well made, and uh, the dynamic between Tifa, Aerith, and Cloud is, is really good. When uh, in the sewers, Tifa and, and Aerith uh, kind of team up, and Cloud is kind of left behind in a few scenes. It's it's funny. yeah, it's hilarious. So yeah, it's uh, really cool. But I could go on, go on, and go on. Oh about yeah, the characters, of course. So it's just. Keep on uh, going to the next ones. The Avalanche Trio, I try to keep it brief, but uh, it's, it's hard. Anyway, Jess, you, you mentioned sh she's thirsty, but I kind of have to uh, um, kind of normalize this a little <laughs> bit. Or how you, I, I don't know the, uh, the English word for it, but it's, she seems thirsty, but there's more to it. Because she's yes. an aspiring actress, or well, aspiring. She has had a role as the princess. Not for long because then her dad got sick and she quit. Yes, exactly. But yeah. she's still an actress, and she, you you notice that she puts on an act so many times with with her. That's true. Psych at the end, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so over the top, and it's just who she is. She she likes to play around, and she yeah. I, th I think she notices that Cloud doesn't really have any experience with uh, women, and then she she can uh, fool around with him. Uh, mm -hmm way easier than with others and also he's uh, good to look at he's a strong man and exactly <laughs> it's just this combination is so easy for her to just uh, fool around play around i think uh, i'm not sure i don't think she develops feelings or anything just that she warms up to him a little bit and uh just feels like she can uh, as i said just play around a little and just have fun but she i think she does like him in some in, in some ways, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. But not I think like, that she like, develops but... it over time, like yeah, a little bit. She, yeah, yeah, I think a little bit. I think a little bit that yeah. she's kind of it starts happening, but yeah. then everything in the story starts happening as well, yeah. and then it <laughs> kind of puts a stop on all that because yep. their priorities change completely, mm. right? It's like that one Definitely. moment when they were after they are parachuting down yep. and that moment they have together and then it's nighttime and then she goes home and he's she's like i guess does she ask him to come over i think uh, so, I, right? uh she, she says to come over uh the next night because her roommate's out 
Yeah. Exactly. But it's just like everything's kind of calm and everything's yeah. just like perfect, you know? But that's never going to happen because come on, like look at this world. You know what I mean? Like it's like that perfect moment and then it's kind of gone because yeah. their priorities are just completely shift and mm. they're kind of woken up to this reality like no, it's never going to be normal. It's like that moment of normalcy. Yep. And then it's just like who are we kidding? There's no normalcy yeah. in this world. <laughs> no, right? Like not. it's just it's never going to happen. So it's like that I like that moment that they have together and oh, I definitely. think that they did a good job communicating that. Mm. And also at the begin, right at the beginning, even when she's like opening up the door to go into the oh reactor, yeah, remember, um, it's it's none of my business. But are uh, uh but t uh, are you guys close? Uh, meaning Tifa. <laughs> yeah. Before that, though, outside the first oh. door, I think she's like, oh, he's a looker oh, or something are, the, like that. Very first, and she's right, right, like, she, oh, she, uh, they call him Cloud, and she's like, to, oh, yeah. <laughs> good to look at too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I I think this this is also something to kind of let off steam a little bit because all this avalanche thing and, and fighting against exactly. Shinra really uh, brings you down. So uh, mm -hmm. kind of have this completely other life, quote unquote, uh, with with Cloud or his this, those interactions. I think are really good for her psyche too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just came she's to mind right grabbing now. Grabbing onto him during yeah. the. Uh... The motorcycle yeah. <laughs> she's got her head on him yeah uh it was really awesome especially if you lose less than 20 percent hp i think it is then you get the scene where uh, she really compliments you and gives you a kiss on the cheek it's so sweet oh really yeah and then she really grabs oh. her around his belly and yeah it's it's a different i wouldn't scene. know that because yeah. i barely escaped yeah, with same. a sliver of hp so. in the first in the first I think I was at like 20% HP left or something. And uh, then yeah. she uh, chastised me a little bit, jokingly, uh, that I failed the driving test. And I think that's oh, always... I think that's what yeah, happened to me. <laughs> exactly. And there's one between where I, uh, I, I think I watched Low Runners play through and he had around half HP or something like that. And she said he, he did uh, pass the test, but uh, he, he didn't get the kiss on the cheek. It oh, was kind of some, okay. something in between. So you have three outcomes there. And oh, the, that's music, awesome. the, the music is also different. It's pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It is. It's like the, the music is also different between those three massages. I think there's the poor man's oh, massage, really? the standard massage, and the exquisite massage or something. And all the three have different music. I only heard the, the, the ex exquisite massage or the best one. But I've heard yeah, the other ones Yeah, that's what I have... paid for it too. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to go for <laughs> yeah, it. sure, of I'm course. I'm just going to go for it. But then yeah. watching it, I was like, I yep. kind of feel like I didn't get what I paid for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was I have to go back and redo all that because obviously yeah, like, to get the platinum, we need yep. to go in for the different dresses, right? I think yeah. there's like, yeah. uh, you have to pay a certain amount or whatever. So I'll see all of those things after, probably. We'll see how it goes, but it's going to be on hard. So especially, yeah. I mean, like the the um, the G bike part, right? Like it's, I'm not sure how that's going to go uh, I, <laughs> on hard, on hard. I probably won't get to see that nah, Jesse uh, kiss. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my easy playthrough right now because I, I play on, uh, using a German language because uh, German is much closer to the Japanese localization. Okay. So I may might be able to pick up some other or different nuances in certain dialogues, mm -hmm. especially towards the end. And also without any text on screen. So I, I record myself again, also not myself, just the game again to have footage without right. the, the subs the and anything. So yeah. I can... Uh, get some screenshots or better material for certain videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I'm doing right now. And the hard playthrough comes afterwards when I have more yeah. time and have really can focus on, on battles and can ignore practically everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, tensions ending. <laughs> Let's go back to <laughs> Bigs and Wedge. Um, I don't have too much to say about Biggs and Wedge. Wedge is kind of the, uh, on one hand, the comic relief, but on the mm -hmm. other hand, he he really is a great glue in this um, this whole dynamic because he's the nice guy. He tries to be uh, friendly mm -hmm. with Cloud, be his friend, and is is the one that is kind of the most innocent of all. And it's yeah, it really rounds out this this whole group dynamic. I really love it. 
and his his signature thumbs up is is really cool <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah and yeah maybe they sometimes go a little bit of, uh, overboard with his love for food but i still i still liked it it's cool and also his love for cats seriously he gets uh, distracted twice in chapter 4 <laughs> above the plate yeah <laughs> So many kitties. <laughs> yeah, yeah Wedge, Wedge is lot. lovable. Yeah. <laughs> He's so lovable. And Biggs. You'll learn some, uh, some parts of Biggs' character, but I think he got the short end of the stick in this part. Uh, I think this so part. too. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's just not too much character moments. For, for Wedge, he had those in, um, in Jesse's home with a Midgar special. He had it when uh, jumping down with Cloud with the parachute. He had it. He stood a bit out when he was just uh, distracted by the cats and also getting bitten in the in the butt by those guard dogs. He had so many little ca- characterization moments that yeah. really made him uh, or made me love him even more. But Bix was kind of get the, got the shaft. He was just there and explained stuff. Uh, like uh, the weapon upgrade was for yeah, him, but exactly. This, but this wasn't really a, uh, for me. This wasn't really a characterization of Biggs. And more like, yeah, he's t- he's uh, the tutorial guy for the weapon upgrades, and also yes. t- uh, telling us to prepare before going into this uh, sector seven six annex area. But what I liked about about him was how he was portrayed during this battle because he was uh, pretty good help by uh, sh- uh, shooting people and uh, throwing down those rocket launchers was pretty cool. Those moments were cool, but still uh, not too much characterization. He, the only character, real characterization he got was uh, when talking to him after this mission, when he was uh, swiping the floor outside of his house, which doesn't really make sense. Because everything is dirt, <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe just. Uh, I, I think it doesn't really swipe the floor to swipe the floor, but to kind of uh, occupy his mind a little bit because he's he he constantly worries about uh, what can go wrong and plan A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> yeah, his uh, there was there was a little bit of it, but too little compared to the other one, especially Jesse, and I find that a bummer. Uh, yeah, I pity. agree with you. Yeah, yeah he kind of didn't get mm. as much screen time as the, but as yeah, the other two. With this uh, additional scene at the ending, we exactly. might see him. But yeah, we might. That's uh, not a can of worms we won't open right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's for later. Yeah, but yeah, it's just oh well. We got a little bit of story from the teacher right because he... oh right 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 yeah because he was uh her predecessor miss folia's predecessor yes. in uh, the leader of the orphanage i found of this really endearing exactly. yeah. it, fit, it yeah, fits I really like well that. and this... that's pretty much it like yeah. you don't get like a scene of him at that time doing those things or no, a connection no. there we didn't get any of that or go to sector five with biggs or something like that exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We didn't get any of that. That would have been a great opportunity yeah. to to kind of connect with him on another level. Yeah, because we it... got so much Jesse, and yeah. we did get a lot of Wedge. Actually. Yeah, too. That's too, especially with Cloud after the the mission in in chapter four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well, maybe another time. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right, Square Enix, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do something with Biggs, please. <laughs> yeah. All right, so a few words about the Shinra XX. I thought they were phenomenally, phenomenally portrayed. Even if they were a little bit too short, like Palmer almost got the shaft. He saw mm-hmm. Sephiroth. He uh, had a few uh, lines of dialogue in uh, the meeting, the executive yeah. meeting. And this hidden scene or optional scene when you peek through the... The keyhole oh, in the yeah. Honeybee Inn, where he's, uh, yes. he's chasing uh, the, the Honeybee Girl. <laughs> oh, and after two God. rounds, he's uh, huffing tired. and puffing, tired. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fun. Uh, but that's yeah. about it. But I think we get much more characterization in the next part when we go to Rocket Town. Right, exactly. And probably in part three when we go back to Rocket Town. 
if they're going to do three parts. We have no idea mm-hmm. because in in the interview in the Ultimania day, they were saying that they hadn't they didn't set anything in stone yet. It could be hmm. three parts, as people speculate, or they they might be uh, doing shorter DLCs and iterate much more, so that the the people get or the players get the content much sooner and yeah it's uh, i don't know know what i think about that but anything anyway that's a talk for another day but uh i hope for much more palmer in the next yeah i agree with you though we didn't get i thought we were gonna get a little bit more of palmer we didn't get that much but not really also scarlet i think she had this uh her um her uh, lines of dialogue in the meeting her her Mm -hmm. dedicated scene uh, in this material lab and yes the newscast in sector five yeah the newscast that was, that was yeah. really good <laughs> um, yeah but, she but... was in a few other just there i think like was i don't know she? if she had any any lines or anything oh in the end i you saw her in the i know ending, that she was course. at the yeah. end yeah, yeah. yeah when they were That's all the together in That's shinra tower because president yeah. shinra's dead and then the rufus is takes taking over, over yeah. and then she says exactly. something but other than that i don't think so yeah, those four appearances. I think it was was okay for uh, this part because she didn't really mm-hmm. have any any significance in Midgar. But there's much more to come, especially in uh, mm-hmm. the huge Materia quest, and then later uh, with the pl- Proud Claude, and hopefully more additional scenes. Yes, because they really. She is she's a real bitch. <laughs> if I <laughs> <laughs> need to use this language, she really is. I hope they keep the slapping scene in. Oh yeah, we'll see, in some guess, way. Because <laughs> yeah, in some way. Because yeah. it's 2020. We don't know when this yeah. game's gonna come yeah. out. Like <laughs> exactly. 2025? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, I, I hope. I hope earlier. Maybe 2023 or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, I I really love that that uh, she used this um, this grunt as her footstool. Mm-hmm. But not only yeah. that, when she stood up and went out of the room. He really went on all four, or kept on all fours, and uh, scuttled behind her. It's just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? That's, that was funny. Yeah, Why? That was funny. It's just, oh, oh man. Yeah, she's definitely a dominatrix or something. Is uh, yeah. <laughs> she loves torture? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, she she sets herself in the meeting. Like, uh, mm-hmm. if you if you need some uh, some t- torture tools uh, or something, or she, I, or I <laughs> no, I prefer torture myself or something. When uh, yeah, Hoja talks about Aerith or putting some more pressure on Aerith. Oh yeah, yeah that's then true. Heidegger comes on. Uh, yeah, I have my whole arsenal at your disposal. What? I don't need. <laughs> Hoja doesn't need like guns or swords or something. <laughs> yeah, just over the top, all of them. Speaking of Hojo, uh, oh, super creepy and slimy and just, <laughs> ew, nah. But I, I love this. They really played him up exceptionally they well. They did. Yeah. So well done. And he really does, does get a fair share of screen time here, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also Heidegger, this additional scene uh, in, I think it was, no, both, uh, chapter 5 and 7. Like uh, him behind the the cameras yes. or the screens and mm-hmm. telling the others what to do and all the this whole thing with the airbuster and the the spoof when they were live. Oh, sir, airbuster is only sixty percent uh, complete. Hey, I'm <laughs> on air. Shut up! <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, they didn't lose the humor. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and President Chinra is just as evil as always and you 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 really feel that he has the power he just only needs to lift a finger and everyone just goes silent Mm -hmm. even reeve (laughs) well maybe especially reeve i don't know yeah i felt bad for reeve yeah definitely he tries so hard to reason with him but it's no use just no use yeah speaking of reeve well made as as well like this, this additional scene where he's calculating mm-hmm. the the damages and what he can, yeah. what he can do, and also when you, when you're in the vent, which is terrible, but those two scenes in the vent, those optional scenes when you can uh, look yes. down and uh, see yeah. uh, employees do stuff. There's yeah. this one meeting where they uh, try to come up with uh, solutions and uh, other things for Reef was really good world building, for mm-hmm. Shinra companies really well done. Um, yeah, I think it was it for 
those. There are, are some more NPCs, notable ones, uh, for example, a Shinra middle manager, which uh, was kind of a little bit of a comic relief in terms of, or in conjunction with Barrett on the train, and there wasn't really uh, more to him. But here he gets much more characterization, and you really see a bit of a, a different part of Shinra that there are just normal people trying to get by and uh, believe in Shinra and don't really know what's going on behind the curtains, <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah. And yeah, his, his speech uh, against Barrett and the other ones clapping was really good. <laughs> Cringy, but good. And then, I don't, don't know if you've noticed that, but when you get back to Sector 7 the first time, uh, on the first plaza with uh, the food stalls, in the middle there's this, uh, this circular bench with the general manager talking to his wife and child. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, he also uh, tells them, hey, there were uh, av avalanche uh, sympathizers there. And then, oh, you, I hope you told them off. And say, yeah, yeah, I, they were, cry <laughs> they were uh, begging like crybabies when I was finished with them. And that, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it's, so, it's really good. Uh. And then uh, I think on the next day, still in Sector 7, he and his other two uh, co-workers are there near sector uh, near the seventh heaven again, talking about uh, stuff as avalanche and work at Chindra and stuff. It's really really good. S so much more um, expansion on minor characters and world building and exactly. showing different parts of Chindra. It's really good. Really yeah, good. I liked that. That's yeah. what I was just about to say. That I appreciate the fact that they gave us a glimpse of the lives of the Shinra employees because yep. those people are not necessarily evil and no. they're just working for the company and exactly. they also probably don't know definitely like, everything no. <laughs> that Shinra is doing and they feel nope. like they're doing a good thing right so yeah, those sure. innocent people are just there working and you see that as well when they uh I don't know if you if you walked up the staircase but I didn't I took actually took the elevator both and then uh oh, okay and yeah. then uh, you see, like, the door opens, right? And it's an employee. And then they're kind of questioning, like, oh, yeah, they're real people here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like <laughs> Definitely. I appreciated that. Yeah, uh, definitely. And when you talk with uh, or listen to NPCs in uh, the Shinra HQ as a whole, you all, all mm -hmm. also notice that they're just there to work. They have no idea. They bought the propaganda and exactly. are none the wiser. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I really like this, this aspect, definitely. Mm -hmm. And there, we touched on those, like Betty gives yes. also a different um, perspective, especially when Aerith is uh, saving her in mm -hmm. chapter 12. I found yeah. this a really good scene. And uh, this, you also notice that she has, she, ha she has her ways with children, like Betty instantly uh, yes. trusts her. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really good. And Marl, I, I love her. Marl is, is such a cool character. Like, yes, like the, the, the mom of the slums or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she knows awesome. what's that. Yeah, definitely. Told Cloud off. But then when she notices that, that Cloud makes Tifa happy, like after this optional scene uh, when they had an alone time in her apartment, she notices mm -hmm. that and tells Cloud, you take good care of her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Uh, we touch upon Miss Folia already so i won't uh, yeah. say anything anymore uh, angel of the slums 2 last uh, i think even in the last episode yes we did yeah and kyrie before also there is the reporter which also t uh, ties into kyrie into the angel of the slums yes i liked the addition of this reporter and was really uh also sh uh, sh uh, shines a light on the press of shinra yeah like erith's exactly. reaction oh that rag <laughs> <laughs> and Barrett's reaction in chapter 14, I think. It's, yeah, they know Shinra's newspapers are just crap, <laughs> full of crap. Yeah. Uh, but personally, he was annoying to me. But this is ch purely personal matter. But in terms of game, uh, game lore, story build up yeah. and stuff, I really found this a great uh, addition. This report. Yeah, I thought so too. But I thought that he, I thought that he had a lot of lines. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. Definitely, He's talking yeah. a lot. I don't think he needed to. I think they could have just maybe gave him a little bit less lines, but made those lines count a little bit more. Because I remember that I was listening to him talk, and he's talking a lot. Yeah. I, like while you're trying to accept the quest and stuff, which is fine because he's trying to give us an understanding as to like why he's there. And mm. I appreciated that. But that was pretty much 
it for me, like why I felt like. Yeah. I, th I think it's uh, it's deliberate because it's he's a reporter. He wants to yeah. sell his uh, or he wants to get, get the story and really sell his view on things and uh, yeah, that's bring true. you over. So he just has to keep uh, talking like a salesman. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's, that's it's, it's annoying, true. but it's yeah. true. It's it makes sense. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. reporters are yeah. like that. Well, yeah, not yeah. all reporters, but a not lot of all, reporters of course. have to, have to be like that. Hashtag not all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think I'm not quite sure, but he, his voice actor kind of reminded me of the narrator in the uh, Avatar series, like the animated series. Okay. Which kind of looks, kind of leans on anime, but is a US production. I think both uh, okay. seasons it was the same narrator, or was it a different one in the second season? I don't know. Not 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 season yeah. second part like the, the the first one had I think three seasons and the second had two okay or something but yeah he was the narrator and in certain certain lines really reminded me of this uh, voice actor I, <laughs> I should I should look it up but uh, I forgot to see if it's the same yeah, yeah, yeah probably is be. maybe so yeah and yeah you already touched on those but the wall market people especially the new ones like uh, Andrea or uh, Andrea. As Chocobo mm -hmm. Sam, Madam M, and Leslie, they're such good additions. So good additions. Re they all mm -hmm. have their own characterization. They get the fair share of uh, screen time. And they're even part of this whole... I, I think this whole wall market segment with all the side quests and the main quests, this, it's a whole package, a complete package for me. It's just... It, everything fits uh, neatly together. I really love it. Yeah, same here. Yeah. It was one of my favorite parts in this game. Oh, definitely. Uh, I haven't played the Yakuza games, but I've heard so many times that those who played Yakuza games, they said, yes. oh, World Market is right, uh, right out of this game. Or it's, it's practically the same in terms of uh, atmosphere and what happens and stuff, yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't played Yakuza either. either. I, I... It's, yeah, but <clears throat> I could go on and on forever for those. So oh, yeah, I just for sure. Uh, cut it short, but... <laughs> it's like the anger management issues of Madam M and this, uh, mm -hmm. this kind of <laughs> quiet attitude, a quiet, uh, re not really reserved, but like controlled attitude of Chocobo Sam, which is complete the opposite of Madam M. <laughs> so that's probably why this it didn't work out for them. It's it's so yeah, funny. Exactly. Yeah. But you really notice that Chocobo Sam has been there for ages and he knows what's up and he knows how to handle people. He knows what's, uh, what's going on and mm -hmm. you notice that. And it's really, really good, really well made. And Andrea is just something else. The whole honeybee segment is something else. It's, I don't know, it's just, uh, I don't think you find this in any other game this way. No, exactly. I don't it's, think so either, yeah. but I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Definitely. A lot of people... A lot of people thought it was too much, and that's the point. <laughs> that's fine. That's their opinion. Yeah, mm. and it th that's how I felt like playing the original game. Like it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, oh, come yeah. on. Like I, I loved it. I thought it was really well done. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get a hundred percent on that dance. I need to go back through and do it again Same. so I can get the platinum. I think I missed two moves that were good and not great. Like I did 28 oh, I or 26 okay. amazing or great. And then I had two that were just good. I didn't have any that were bad. So that's good. Oh, okay. I was but... way worse. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I should have saved before I did it though, because I didn't. Mm. And I did, I, I got a, like, I, I got like the hundred percent on the, on the, uh, in the, uh, just the practice before you start. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's not going to be that bad. And then we go in and there's so many moves in the camera angles. So mm -hmm. Sometimes the camera angle is a little different and it's like hard to see when the thing like the yeah, little definitely. orb is going to come around yeah. to the thing, like the little button. So, but yeah, I thought it was awesome. I loved it. I loved this part. Yeah, they went overboard completely. They went all they in. Did. I love this. It's the dancing really was so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we have to talk about Don Corneo himself. It's yeah, such a great depiction. Like, Exactly how he is in the original, but more. Mm -hmm. Like how he he oogles the oh, ogles, oogles the the yes. ladies, 
just so uh just get away from me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and to, and to, he, he's, he's... he likes being yeah. treated badly though because oh yeah yeah you know what i mean like they're being yeah he he ins- like Cloud mean to him and he's him, like yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, <more>. i like what <laughs> yeah, yeah he's like i like that or i like girls that are like this or something yeah definitely like that, right? the only thing that he doesn't like is being punched or being kicked <laughs> yes <laughs> but yeah no he, he they did him justice also i well we come to that later but he there's uh, another scene with him which kind of ex- expands a little on him in a good way i think and i hope mm-hmm. they also uh expand on him a bit more in the wutai segment yeah unless they completely change everything but i hope he uh, <laughs> appears there as well so he is still yeah, that would be uh, awesome. alive and around so he mm-hmm. needs to come back yeah um, yeah all in all even the, the the small npcs some were really good because um i thought but i think we already uh talked about this in the last episode i can't quite remember but mm-hmm. the, the world building was was really fascinating when, when listening to all those npcs so many talked about their own yeah. lives, talked about Shinra, about Avalanche, different viewpoints, how they get by, and talking about other parts of uh, the area they're in, talk about the Tifa, the Seventh Heaven, yeah, stuff like that. It's it's really cool. Yeah. So I loved all of that. Yeah. I loved it. If you don't if you don't listen to the NPCs, you miss out on so much nuance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you really do. Especially when you're walking through uh, Wall Market with Cloud's dress, you get so many hilarious <laughs> remarks. <laughs> it's, it's it's funny. Yeah, yeah, the only thing that I mean, we talked about this before on the previous episode mm-hmm. about the music, but the music just it needed a little something different for Wall Market because the theme is oh, repetitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah it so is. That would have made me enjoy it even more. But I did love it. I would love it. But mm. that's the only thing. It kind of took me out of it a little bit because the theme continuously plays. And I think that it could have helped to have no music. I think that they could have just... In some parts, Some probably, parts yeah. having nothing. Just silence. Just silence would have been great. They, I think they do have that in some at some points, but I can't remember from the top of my head. But I think there are a few points, especially tied to story or... Uh, like right after a scene which uh, has some yeah yeah uh i'm talking about just when you're exploring it oh i see okay no ex- i think because how many is... times are you running around through that area right you have to go back oh yeah you're running around again. so many times yeah <laughs> it's just that i feel like yeah. maybe if when you went into a shop or something like they didn't have to play any music like it could have just been or, or the shop the, the music something. in the shop or something i don't know yeah yeah, but I loved it. It was like yeah. one of my favorite it's parts nitpicking. of this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. I loved it. I thought it was definitely. Yeah, really it's just well that uh, I, mean, I don't know. I think I mentioned it last time, but uh, the wall market theme, like the first, uh, the first few notes or the first, yeah, I think four measures or something is the exact same as a, a, a whole new a whole world new from world. Uh, yeah. Aladdin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like it when it starts <laughs> yeah. you think about that so, wait what yeah. wrong movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they have to have more of that like this uh, illusion of or like parallel to the Top Gun theme when they're jumping with, uh, down with the, uh, the parachute it's pretty similar to Top Gun music mm-hmm. so they do have a few uh, pop culture references in the in yeah. music there which is it's not too bad if it's just a reference, it's fine. But yeah, I think from my, that's, that's it from, from my side about mm-hmm. characters. Maybe I forgot someone, but I don't think I do. I did. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, 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 the Turks. The Turks, we completely forgot the Turks. Yeah, we did, we did. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, guys. Oh, man, we, we need to, to squeeze this in real quick because the Turks okay. are awesome. They're so awesome. We especially rude he is he's the extreme professional mm-hmm. cool as heck but uh then he gets the, the call from reno who which completely throws him off because he had different plans and he seemed like uh, uh, wait, um uh, uh, uh okay i'll be there <laughs> uh, it's so funny also uh Aerith, go home and stay there you know i can't do that uh, uh 
<laughs> it, it, stuff that he doesn't anticipate completely throws him off and it's so funny to look at <laughs> and, yeah. yeah i love the turks i love the turks in this game yeah. i thought they did a really great job yeah and reno's so cocky <laughs> <laughs> he is yeah he is but they, yeah. Do, they do grow a conscience yes they at do least, they show that side of them yeah and also, they mm. are human and yep, sometimes definitely. make mistakes, you know? Mm. Like, they show that one part when they're flying the helicopter. Yep. Doesn't he blow something up? And he was just like, oh, oops. Like, I guess. Oh, I... yeah, yeah, that, that's when, when he's, <laughs> because... he, he's supposed to shoot Cloud and Tifa, but then he uh, kind of rears away, moves yeah. away. And oh, my hand slipped because he didn't want to hit Tifa. He loves Tifa or has a crush on her. <laughs> We, you don't <laughs> yeah. really get it, but if you know the original, you know that this is the case. And then, like, yeah. he blows something up, but he wasn't given an order. And then he was like, <laughs> Reno's just like, what are you doing? Like, ah, uh, like, <laughs> nobody told you to do that. And he's like, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, their I dynamic forget. is so funny. <laughs> uh, they're they're really, really good. really good, good bros. And then he just yeah. <laughs> flies away on the... <laughs> The ladder oh, after right, the right. boss yeah, battle yeah. was so ridiculous. Yeah, it was great. I loved that that they mm. kept that. He just yeah. like flies away on a helicopter <laughs> on the ladders. Like, why don't you climb up and go inside? Yeah, you know? exactly. Like... <laughs> oh boy, oh, it was awesome. Yeah, and Song, their leader, is just the complete opposite. He's business only, complete devoid of emotion. At least uh, in this game, maybe mm -hmm. it changes a little bit in the. Next, or uh, the one over, uh, the one after that. But here, it's, it's, it's a really good contrast between him and the other two. Especially when, uh, when they talk uh, in, I think, chapter 16 or 17 in their uh, office. Mm -hmm. When uh, Song is just uh, doing the paperwork and picking up yes. the phone. <laughs> and, and Drew, this, uh, just, uh, his conscience is chewing on him and did we really need to do that? And Song yeah. is like, oh, well... We need, we 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 had to balance the scales, like uh, give yeah, give something true. back to the to the planet. And Rudas, do you really think that? Like, what are you talking about? How can you justify <laughs> their deaths, like something like that, just in a more controlled manner? Yeah, yeah it, was, exactly. it was really good. I'm so looking forward to further interactions in the next games and Elena. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, guys, so the next part that we are talking about here is the story and events in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So I kind of talked about, like, when we were talking about the characters, I did talk about my opinions on some of the characters in this game, and I did go into a little bit of the story details about some of the characters. So I thought that the main story of this game was pretty faithful to the original. Um, it's pretty much a beat, like, beat by beat, like just mostly re, yeah. um remake of the original story up until a certain point and then things kind of change a lot oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh i did appreciate the additions to the characters to flesh out the characters which gave more weight to the story i thought overall yeah definitely i felt more when like i said jesse like we don't know if she's dead but when it's implied that she's dead I felt more than I felt when I was playing through the original game, playing through this game. So I appreciated that. Uh, I think in the chapter selection, or not, not just selection, a chapter uh, overview where you can read, uh, read up on the different parts mm -hmm. of the chapter, there's the story beats. It, yeah. Apparently it actually says that Jesse died uh, there on the oh, plate. Oh, does it? Okay. But I need uh, to go back and replay. Yeah, yeah I'm only I'm only on chapter three hard. Like I beat chapter three on hard mode, and I haven't went back to the game oh, I because see. I okay. I really wanted to take a break though, and really think about how I felt about the ending, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Yep. But I still need to go back. Like some people went right away and just went back yep. into it, and I did, uh, and I just did chapter up to chapter three, and I'm like. <laughs> I just need to take a break from this and play something different and then yeah. go back to it um, later. But that's interesting. And I like that they added a little bit more story to the chapter selection where, because they do talk about like what Sephiroth was talking about as well, right? At the yeah. end of at the seven seconds, which is yeah, awesome as well. Because there's a lot of people thinking about like, oh, what does he mean? Mm. 
Who knows if that's actually what they mean, though? You know, Square could change that, even though this know. is what they're saying now. We don't know. Um, but yeah, I just thought that the additions to the story and throughout the story for the characters was very well done. There weren't there weren't too many times when I kind of felt like, okay, these are just things added to waste our time mm. uh, to make the game longer and distract us from our main objective to add gameplay time. Because some games do that. And I know that we talked about this before the game came out because we were hoping, we were like, our hopes and dreams for this yep. game. We just don't <laughs> want to feel like we are wasting our time doing needless mm. side quests that don't have any payoff to the main story. Some side quests did have that, but we didn't get a full completion of those storylines. So we'll see. Like, I'll have a better understanding when this whole game is completed, mm. beginning to end, and then we'll have to go back and re listen to this and then make another, um, you know, base our opinions on the ending of the complete series. Yep. But right now, I feel pretty good about everything that I experienced in this game, story wise, and the events I thought were awesome. The plate fall had. It felt, for me, it felt like more impactful. Some people said that it felt less impactful. That's that's totally fine. Like that's that's their opinion, and I understand. Like somebody explained it to me. I forget who it was now. Like their reasoning behind that, and that's awesome. For me, I felt like it was more impactful because we had more time with these characters. Definitely, yeah. But what I think they mean, or at least I heard, heard a few people talk about this, and uh, some reasonings are the climb up to the top of the, the support pillar or the top platform was way too long. Okay. That was one. And for the other one is the cho choice of music when they escape. It was still this uh, kind of battle-ish uh, theme with uh, the guitar riff in the background. So okay. It kind of kills the mood for some. In the original, okay. it was still this, that the, I think the hurry theme was there. Oh, okay. But it faded out when they were uh, like swinging outside of Sector 7. And then it, it's complete, it was completely drowned out when we saw President Chinra and heard his, uh, his classical piece in the background. Right. And then uh, that music was completely gone, I think. And this time we didn't get anything of that. It was just the same um, piece of music playing a whole the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, which started after the Rude and Reno fight was just yes. there until, I think, until they actually escaped and then it faded out, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I'd need to check again. But I think those two points are the main, the main ones where it yeah, kind I of agree killed the with pacing. You. I agree with you. Yeah, it did. I agree. Like, going up you know, was a long time. Yeah. It was a long time. And it kind of takes you out of it. Mm. The initial plate fall, like, for example, when it's, you see Merle and she's trying to help the people and then yeah. you see Betty and stuff like that, like, that was impactful for that me. That was definitely. More yeah. than oh, yeah. going up the pillar. And I agree, the music was different and it kind of takes you out of it. But the initial part when you're going to start that part where you start to traverse, I thought was very impactful because you're going and it's kind of like you're in a hurry and people are panicking mm. and then you have to go up. But the whole traversing that part was long. And yeah, there were a few parts in this game that were a little bit too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll get to and that I later. Did... Uh -huh. I did say previously about this part as well that I'm going to talk about now it's the going back to the sewers after oh yeah I don't know how much we needed to do that I feel like they did send us back for the Leslie Kyle story because he lies to you right because mm. you go down there and it's, he's down there because he's trying to find a locket right or a necklace uh, or I, something he, he already had this but uh, one of the, the apps who uh, showed stole it and we needed to, needed to get it back. But he already had this and he needed to... Wait, what? Right. 
Oh, I think he wanted revenge for Don Corneo because he know he knew he was uh, hiding down there and he wanted to get rid of him, kill That's him true. with a pistol. But this didn't pan out like he wanted to. I hope that we get resolution to the story in the in the further parts. I didn't mind going back mm. there and playing through it. Like the gameplay, I mean. Yeah, same. But for the story, I just don't know if we needed to do that. The thing is, uh, after thinking a little bit about this, this whole segment just isolated at its own is it's fine. I don't mind. It's it was cool. Had some additional mm -hmm. storylines. Yeah. Was, you saw yeah. different parts of the sewers. This whole uh, exactly chasing like the, the Epsu showed, and yes, uh, a rematch like rematch against Epsu was also not too bad. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this should have been an optional quest and not main material yes. in my opinion. Yes. Because it. What yeah. kind of a payoff did we get for doing all that? We did get a Nothing. scene with Don Corneo and mm -hmm. and and Leslie Kyle. That's pretty much all we got at the end yeah. of that whole thing. And we got a little bit of story about, you know, him and his fiance. Yeah, definitely. I forget the fiance's name. Uh, I don't think he, she has a name. You don't even see her whole face. <laughs> I thought that he says her name, though, because I think that I think so. One time yeah. I looked it up on the Internet. Maybe okay. he doesn't. I don't know. But I was reading about him remember. on the wiki page for him in the compilation oh, I see. and i yeah, think yeah. that it says there who it is but i read okay. a lot about him and kyrie and how they work together previously because yeah, yeah. i was trying to understand like more about mm. that storyline and how like why it was they felt like they had to focus on that in this game because that was time away from everything else they could have given us more bigs Yep. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah, they made that way, choice. Yeah. So I was trying to yeah. understand, like, why they made that choice, I guess. But anyway, but maybe they don't say her name. Yeah. But it was cool to see Don Corneo again. But I oh, think definitely. that Leslie yeah. was a little bit naive in thinking mm -hmm. that he could kill Don. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's, he was way over his head. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Don... As much as you think he's incapable or, or in, incompetent, he does know how people work and think. So yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's why he's uh, on his, in his position, because if, if he didn't, he would have been overthrown in an instant. Mm hmm exactly. Yeah. And now we kind of see, like, he knows that it's kind of like Leslie's kind of shown his true colors, right? Yeah. Like his true uh, agenda. Mm hmm <laughs> I guess so he's pretty much screwed now but it's yeah. like don doesn't even care yeah the don is he screwed doesn't even as well care at the end you know yeah, yeah that's true because shinra's yeah, after he kind of laughed at it he yeah. thinks it's funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah i i that was the only thing for me the rest i thought was was really great i was a little confused about how President Shinra dies. Does, do they show that? I can't remember, because in the original, Sephiroth kills him. Yeah, but you don't see it in the original. You only see uh, the Masamune sticking out of his back. Yeah. But here? Yeah, I didn't mean like I, I, didn't mean like I needed to see him actually die. I just forgot. Oh, I okay. Uh, like, how, how do they imply that he died? Do you remember? In the original or the remake? No, in this game. Uh, you, you see him stabbed by Sephiroth. Just... Uh, Camera full on there and okay. played through the chest. So it's it's very I overt. Remember. Here. Maybe I just well wasn't the, looking at my TV. The, the or thing something. is, the the scene right after or the part right after completely overshadows uh, the president's death. So yeah, yeah, and the part right after is Barrett getting stabbed, yep. right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that was interesting for me kind of i was like <gasps> yeah so what what, what are you doing <laughs> wow okay uh obviously later it's found out that he's not actually dead yeah because there's like a whisper that went into him to prevent him from dying because as we know mm. everything about the whispers it's like they're there to preserve the original storyline right exactly, because yeah. they want it to happen the way that it's always played out so yep. Whenever anything is about to happen or does happen that is different mm -hmm. from fate, I guess, they, they want to change it back to the way that it's always been, right? Yeah. Not everything, though. Not everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that he wasn't dead. 
But I was kind of like, what? Oh my God, like gave me a heart attack. And then they tracked, they backtracked yeah. on that. And I was like, oh my God. I think this scene was there to, for, for Sephiroth to make a statement, like to show what he's capable of and that he doesn't care at all what mm -hmm. uh, fate prescri uh, prescribes. And yes. well, fate does fix stuff later. But well, he, he, I think the scene was there to just show he can do whatever he wants and he can do it, mm -hmm. he can uh, uh, succeed, even if um, the Arbiters of Fate kind of clean up after him. That was the yes. impression I got there. Also, the, the uh, four of them, three or four of them circled around him uh, a few seconds after, but he just swiped them away with a sword slash, so you notice that he's pretty powerful at, that, at this point. Yeah, and yeah. Palmer sees him, Yep, and like people don't even believe that he's there. The Shinra. Why would they? Why would anyone believe Palmer? <laughs> exactly. Um, but the Sephiroth that he sees, mm -hmm. is it the original Sephiroth that uh, is in the original not... storyline? Because that one still exists. Well, I guess it's not the original Sephiroth because it's actually just a projection of Sephiroth, right? Because Sephiroth mm. is still in the Northern Crater in the yes original. Yes and no. It's, it's a little bit uh, confusing at times. But the thing is, um, as we see later after the Genoa fight, he, or um, I think that the, his first appearance there and his later appearance in the drum was both, uh, I think, number 40, uh, 49, Marco. Just project, he projected himself onto oh, okay. his body to others because, mm. well, Genoa cells and Genoa stuff, illusion, hallucinations, and shape shifting, yeah. it's, it's a thing. So um, that's why everyone else could see him. And when uh, we defeated Genoa, where, uh, when I think uh, it was right. number 49 who, who got it either was. transformed or just uh, an uh, yeah. hallucination, mass hallucination for everyone. They, uh, he just looked like Genoa. They beat him, he died, and then Sephiroth appeared again as number two. Who we also seen uh, before. Like the one in Sector 5. We see that when uh, Sephiroth climbs uh, up or flies, floats up uh, to the... Um, to the top of the, the top, tower. Top of the tower, off. the apex, yep. And then jumps off as number two. Then, because okay. this body has probably fulfilled its usefulness at that point. So just whew, go right. down with Genova. So I think this was also kind of uh, an escape route for the Genova body for the real Sephiroth in the Northern Crater to take over and then start the journey. That's my interpretation of this. Okay. Yeah. So the Genova that we're fighting in the Shinra in, in President Shinra's office, mm -hmm. you said is the clone? Number 49, yes. I'm not sure if it's just a hallucination or if he actually physically transforms. That right. I'm not yeah, quite sure, but... Uh... Might be, a, might be an Ill, a hallucination for all, hmm. or Ill, an illusion. Yeah, because I was really confused on this part, because I was, I, I, a lot of stuff happens all at once. Yep. I feel, and I was really That's confused, true. because if the whispers are there and they're preser preserving the original timeline, then I'm thinking about, well, is it just the original <laughs> Sephiroth projection that's there, that's doing its thing? You know what I mean? And yeah. then that's what we see. And that's who steals the Genova out of the... The containment, yeah. The containment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So people, I think, were confused. But then some people were saying that, oh, well, you see, at one point, isn't there like a feather that drops? Kind of like when Cloud gets his... Yeah. Like before they enter the, the, the elevator? Yeah. Well, um, I think so. Drop, Something think, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And then, but that's supposed to kind of be an indicator that it's the Advent Children's exactly, Sephiroth yeah. exactly. that is actually there that's doing it because he's from an alternate timeline because he never had his wing at that time. So anyway, there's a lot of yeah, reading that's, into that's this. That's for we'll later too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for later. But yeah. uh, I, I was just a little confused by the end, uh, but I loved everything about this game and the story and yeah uh, I think that's pretty much everything I like the inclusion of the whispers 
And I think that the whispers represent a little bit like the community, the Final Fantasy community, who's trying to preserve the original game and didn't want anything changed in this game. I think that their interpretation in this game is kind of like, I think that it would hold back this game and pushing it into the future. I, I like that they that they added those things, and I think that we'll see where the story goes. And I was I was appreciative that they preserved so much of the original in this game. Definitely, yeah. The only thing that that worries me a little is with fate now gone. Theoretically, yeah. anything could happen. But in interviews, they said now we are. Uh, we will keep the main story beats, like the mm -hmm. main events will still happen. So what exactly was the point? I, know, I, I, th I think I know what the point was, but still it's, it kind of feels a little bit uh, of underutilization because they now don't have a, f a fixed path in front of them and could do anything they want. Right. Everything else will still kind of or maybe 60-70% will still be the same. So, yeah, but I, th I think it's, it all culminates in the, uh, at the, the end of the last part where the actual changes will happen. That's my prediction, mm -hmm. but that's, that's for, for later too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I did talk about this last time. Like, all elements or events from the original have been preserved, mostly but extended and the, there was much more build-up, more meaning. So that's just to reiterate from last time. But also, we were also talking about side quests before the game came out. I think we uh, dedicated a whole episode to that, our apprehensions yes. for this. Yeah, we did. And a few side quests kind of fall into this uh, go, go do this or go get that uh, category. But still, even just uh, gather the kittens for Betty wasn't too bad because Betty wasn't just an NPC that gives us this quest and done. But Betty is actually, a, a, he, she appears more than once later. So, so, so this is kind of an introduction to her. And also, I think it makes sense that they start with a few menial tasks because Cloud is uh, a nobody in slums. And he has to work his way up upwards. So mm -hmm. let's just start with uh, bringing back kittens for a kid, uh, slaying some doom rats, and uh, doing yeah. some other stuff. And then the bigger ones come, like the the uh, wild or wrath wrath dog, I think it's called the the white dog in uh, yeah. the scrapyard. I think so too. Yeah, I think it's 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 meant to be start at the bottom and work your way up. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is kind of an excuse for making such uh, cheap quests, which don't really contribute. But still, there were in the, in the interactions, we saw a little bit of uh, Cloud's character shine through there. Oh, this sucks. Oh, no, I'm done with this. When he uh, finds the last kitten, because all the kittens run away from him. And <laughs> it kind of also ties in with the scene later uh, with Bix, where uh, the kittens also don't really seem to like Cloud. The cats so it's uh, i think everything kind of connects and has meaning and builds up to something but on the surface level it's still kind of uh, yeah fetch quests whatever a few of them uh -huh. at least but a few of them yeah. yeah yeah but you're doing them because you're trying to build up yeah of course have like respect in the yeah, community exactly. right exactly so if it makes it feel like you like those things have meaning essentially because mm. you're right the cloud is new to this place and nobody knows who he is yep. so he's trying to build up his um Repu reputation reputation so yeah. yeah exactly yeah, yeah I, but i think the side quests in sector five were a little bit more fleshed out especially uh everything around the angel of the slums and the, the children those are pretty mm -hmm. neat yeah, there were a few, like, uh, uh, go kill those Mark II monodrives. Yes. This, yeah, that's uh, true. This didn't really amount to anything other than, oh, yeah, those, uh, those are normal monodrives, but got mutated because of the, the explosion of the, the reactor yeah. and the Mako leak. That's blah, blah. true. It's maybe a little bit of world building, but it's 
it doesn't go anywhere, which is a shame. So there were a few meh side quests, but most of them were pretty good, especially in wall market. Wall market. I loved yeah, those. Yeah, and there weren't that many. Like I felt like oh. there were enough side quests. There weren't too many, and there weren't like not enough you know what i mean i thought that it was like a happy medium were they all beneficial to fleshing out the characters in the story no i think that's fine that's my opinion though i don't mind going to different parts of the map to see a different area to kind of kill a different type of enemy although with the mono drives you went back through the same areas you were before when getting the first time yes yeah that's true so I already went to one area after you go back because there's children that are stuck there. Oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, it, on a little platform, like a little rock in the middle of the water. Oh, I see, I already yeah, went yeah. there before, yeah, and then I went back again and had to kill the same type of enemy, which is fine, but I know what you mean. It's kind of like you're backtracking, like, oh, I've seen this before, you know? No. Yeah, it's not not too bad, but it's some some side quests and some content could have been uh like fleshed out a little bit or more mm-hmm. of a, not really more variety but like uh, backtracking sector five especially when you go back to the graveyard twice or go uh, go up up to the lookout where mm-hmm. angel of the slums lair is i went there because i was just uh, exploring and no- nothing was there. And then, oh, okay, I need now I need to g- uh, go back there. And you were just running around the <laughs> the scrapyard uh, outside of the, sl- the Sector 5 slums so many times. But, yeah. This, this, that's what I appreciated in Sector 7, because there were uh, two areas outside which you only w- could go to for side quests. You, you didn't, couldn't go there by yourself. Mm-hmm. So at least you had dedicated areas for side quests. That I appreciated a little bit. Yeah. And uh, next point, Cloud's new glitches and flashbacks. Like there's... Maybe uh, some people found this a bit too excessive that uh, all those new uh, flashbacks uh, Cloud had or flash forwards and Sephiroth hallucinations and stuff. But I think they... They really f- uh, fleshed everything out a bit more. Like the the build up to Sephiroth has has to had has to have happened differently anyway because of nature of the split. Of course, they could have just dedicated this f- uh, first game to Shinra only, and Sephiroth mm-hmm. was maybe just something in passing and not mentioned practically at all. Maybe seen once during a flashback, but uh, not not put emphasis on. It could have worked, but they decided against it, and uh, because everyone, quote unquote, <laughs> everyone knows Sephiroth, so they needed to show him, or else uh, people would miss him and say, w- w- uh, "Where's Sephiroth? Where's Sephiroth?" Blah blah blah. Uh, I don't know. Could, I think I could, it could have worked either way. But when you start including Sephiroth and needed need a build up and show a little bit who he is, well. It, it, they couldn't go into too much, of course, because uh, they needed to uh, to keep, especially the whole Nibelheim flashback or mm-hmm. uh, Calm flashback, however we're going to call it, to the second part, next part. So Sephiroth didn't get too much characterization, but uh, when you include him, you need to include him in a meaningful way. And I think those additional glitches and hallucinations did it, did him justice. In my opinion, right. but I didn't analyze this to the excess of others, so maybe I'm wrong. But I, th- I did like it. It it did uh, give us a, b- a little bit more insight, and some of them were even necessary to build up this whole new narrative around uh, yeah. Advent Children, Sephiroth, and the Whispers, yada yada yada, with yeah, which yeah, we'll yeah. get to later. <laughs> but yeah, this is yeah. Um, I found this this pretty interesting, and I also uh, kind of a mysterious addition to the game in a good way. And there's, yeah, we all already talked about new missions, new story editions. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are a few chapters or a few parts that were a little bit drawn out, especially the second bombing mission. Three whole chapters. Yeah. Um, while 
playing through it first at the first time, I didn't really mind because there was so much uh, character buildup, so much uh, banter, so much uh, new ones sometimes, and uh, different traversal, some uh, riddle, not riddles, uh, puzzles a little bit, traversal mm -hmm. puzzles in chapter six with all those um, uh, moving platforms. Right. But all in all, I think they could have cut everything in half. Yeah. Probably. Also, with, yeah. with all the key cards and... Um, yeah, that was really long. This, uh, I think four? There were four rooms. One key card, two, three, and four key cards to dispose of stuff. Or, or three and three, I don't remember. But this, maybe two rooms would have been enough. I think on on uh, subsequent playthroughs it will will be drawn out and will get uh, get on our nerves because it's just too long when we just want to go through the story mm -hmm. again. So it's yeah, I'm on the I'm on the fence, but they should have cut it out, uh, cut out a good chunk, in my opinion. The same goes for chapters ten and eleven, the sewers and the train graveyard. Well, again. Isolated, they feel pretty good and consistent and uh, have, have enough content. But when uh, combining it with the whole narrative, because yeah, we want to go back to uh, get back to Sector 7 ASAP. And now we're just uh, trying to get through the sewers and where there are a few really good character moments, especially between Aerith and Tifa. It just drags on so long and then comes the train graveyard, which is itself divided into two segments. And with, with its whole new sub-story, which I, I frankly like, I really like this sub-story with that, the children and the ghosts and Ellie Gore. Yeah. This is a really great addition to the, uh, the, I like the that train too. graveyard. However, the placement felt weird because... Yeah, of course, we needed to go through the sewers and the train graveyard because in the original it was like that. It's the, the layout of the slums. They couldn't change that. But still, it completely kills the pacing there on, in hindsight. I didn't mind that much um, on my first playthrough, but I did, I did notice that it dragged on and dragged on. And Tifa said so many times, I, I really need to get back to, that, to Sector 7 so fast. I'm, I'm so worried. Um, Will they really drop the plate? I'm not sure. It was so many times, and come on, just go to the plate already. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's again, as other people put it, pacing issues in certain mm -hmm. chapters. Not the yeah, content. We had two content was good. Boss but... battles in yeah. the train graveyard. Two, that's, what, that's what, why I said two segments in one chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had one inside of the command room, and then mm -hmm. we had the Eligor boss fight as well. So. Yep. Maybe they could have cut that in half. I don't know. So, probably, yeah. Maybe, maybe cut the additional boss battle, like the the ghoul. And may I don't know. It's it's hard to say because mm -hmm. if you look at this one isolated, as if it was, let's say, a, a bigger optional side quest. Well, that part could have been optional then. Yeah. Maybe. Like you said, the one in the command room, the boss, the ghoul yeah. or whatever, that could have been a, a side quest. Maybe, yeah. Or this, the whole storyline with Eligor. But then, it's, if it's just, just uh, optional and maybe even in another point of this game, then uh, going through the train grave graveyard without anything happening would have been dissatisfying, mm -hmm. definitely. So it's... yeah. They somehow had to put it there. But, yeah. Maybe they could have, uh, as you said, uh, encapsulated part, a part of this whole storyline into an optional part, like uh, where it could either go this way to help the kids or that way to continue the story or something like that. I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard to say if, if it would have worked out, but oh well. Um, yeah, we already talked about Aerith's segment in chapter 12, but I just want to iterate, reiterate that this, I really love this, this addition to run around with Aerith uh, and tell everyone to please get out of the slums, help Betty, help Marl, 
go back to Sector 7 and this whole interaction with Marlene, this was so heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. With Marlene uh, just wanting uh, her, her, her daddy to get home. And yeah, she noticed that people are going to destroy their home and Barrett's out there fighting and she was so, so worried. It was heartbreaking to see. And yeah, there's this, this little thing that Aerith does to her, which is probably the same thing she does to Red 13 later, but uh, we'll get to that um, in the next segment. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something about that and I'm like, just kind of biting my tongue until we talk yeah. about the ending. <laughs> But yeah, this this whole part and, and with uh, Song um, catching her there and his, or let's say her bargaining for Merlin. In the original, we only heard about that briefly, but here we get to see it, and I think it's it's really good, and it also contributes to Song's character that we know he's a complete mm -hmm. professional, emotionless, does a job, doesn't care, but he's fair too. So. And, and he doesn't really want to harm Aerith in any way. But he has the order to get her out of there and bring back to Shinra HQ. So, so, so he does. Really well made. And then in, in, in chapter 13, there's this whole secret lab, lab uh, passage or segment, which I, frankly, I loved. It's such a great addition and it does incorporate some of Dirt of Cerberus lore with Deep Ground. I think, uh, was it? it? I think it was in the Ultimania. Uh, one part that was translated specifically talked about uh, this lab and called it Deep Ground or parts of Deep Ground. So maybe we'll see some, uh, see more of this in later parts, maybe when we go back to Midgar in the last part, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this whole segment was pretty uh, pretty well made, I fleshed out Shinra and gave Barrett some time to shine on his on his own, and yeah. it was really good, really good. However, I do have a problem with this whole part, because it's a new part, completely new edition, and for me, when you add a whole new section, it has to have meaning and needs to be there and everything that needs that that happens there has to happen there and to give this place meaning or at least an anchor in the story here practically everything that's happened there could have been moved to either Shinra HQ or to some other parts and ha would have had the same impact like cloud seeing seeing the experiments in the in the tubes Shinra HQ seeing all those failed experiments for the first time, Shinra HQ, we see them there anyway. And giving Barrett time to shine, all right, if they, when they fall down in the drum, start with Barrett, and then meet Red 13 and Cloud later, because Cloud falls. Mm -hmm. And to give a bit more, more suspense, don't play with Cloud, play with the others first and get Cloud maybe last. Because then you're wondering mm -hmm. what happened to Cloud, what, what's, what's with him, did he survive, did he get captured or something like that. And Barrett could have had his, his own role there too. So maybe, yeah, it's, it's uh, also there to save Wedge because apparently the Whispers tried to keep him in place to get him crushed, but, the, but probably this um, debris that fell uh, onto him had maybe... Uh, like kind of a hole right on top of him, so he didn't get crushed, but because of the of uh, the impact the the um the floor gave away, and everything crumbled into this on the on the ground lab where they could then rescue wedge, but it could have still handled differently that they still found wedge in the debris somewhere alive, maybe uh still a hole or sinkhole or something like that, and uh, the cat. The, uh, the cats um, let them there just to wedge, no, no lab, no th nothing whatsoever. And then uh, I think it would have worked too. So that's, I, this is uh, kind of a pity in my opinion, because this whole lab, while really well executed and also built up uh, back in chapter three, where Weimer talked about rumors about a secret lab underneath sector seven, the slums. Mm -hmm. It was incorporated well, 
but nothing that happens there only had to happen there and couldn't have happened anywhere else. That's my personal problem because it's not nothing optional, it's main story. So yeah, this um, I talked about this on Discord and uh, people weren't really um, the same op opinion. Oh. But, uh, well, it's, it's fine. We can disagree yeah. all the time. That's uh, perfect, perfect, perfectly fine. But... Yeah, that would have been cool if they did that. I can see from your point of view. Yeah. To see how... It would have gave a different insight, I think, into what was happening at the time and probably would have helped with the pace a little bit better and explained things a little bit better, like why they were happening. Yeah. But again, don't get me wrong, it's, I, I love this part. It was pretty, pretty cool to play oh, as so Barrett and everything. But, well, yeah. I'm really addressing the, the audience here. So Yeah, I thought that, yeah. for example, like we were going to fight the... Wasn't there a behemoth in there? It was, yeah, but this one was optional. Right. I just feel like, why wouldn't we just fight the behemoth as we went through? Yeah. Like, why did we need to go back? And why yeah, did same, that have to same. be a side quest? Same. It, I understand why, but it would have been cool if that was just like the boss of that. Of yeah, that same. Section. I was about to I was about to mention that. And then you're done that, and then yeah. you don't need to go back there. Exactly. Because <laughs> this is such they well they probably had to because they built uh, built this whole underground laboratory and yes. just going there once and never again. Mm, all right, let's reuse yeah, this for true. a side quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the side quest of, uh, from this, um, what was it, a doctor, I think? Yeah, a doctor? Yes, yeah. You want three things. Uh, mm -hmm. One, you could buy from the Moogle. That's true. And yeah. he, he needs a behemoth horn. A behemoth horn and something else. I forgot where you I forget this too. From. I already had, I already had, a flower. I had two of the things except yeah, same. for the Behemoth horn. horn, yeah, exactly. Same here. Uh, I, I really love the fight and... They, oh it, yeah! In my opinion, it was a much better fight than this. Just a big version of those weird failed experiments, which we get in droves in Hedgehog HQ, anyways. So this this was this enemy was way overused in my opinion. So many times we had to fight those. So many times. That's also why I thought, well, maybe they should have just uh, completely did away with that. Although, the secret underground lab is pretty cool, especially with the ties to. Uh, on uh, to deep ground and to the surface. Yes, but like the the way of his inclusion was kind of a hit and miss for me. Hit because it was great to play through. Miss mm -hmm. because of all the, the reasonings before, because it didn't really yeah. have a, a purpose, a real purpose to be there. So yeah. Chapter fourteen. Um, I heard that many thought chapter four uh, or. Consider chapter 14 as pure padding, uh, while I agree to a certain I agree to a certain degree. Um, most of the side quests there are pretty cool, like the Tonberry and the, the pull-ups, the, the conclusion of the Angel of the Slums was really good. Again, Leslie's Leslie's quest should have been a side quest there, optional, then it would, yeah, would have been we great. We should talk about this, that. So my opinion, I like chapter 14 personally. Because mm -hmm. the content there, while practically everything optional, was mostly really good. Also, uh, I don't think it was um, made clear in the game, but did you know that Jules uh, is the brother of and Andrea? Like oh, the really? Owner? No, I didn't yeah, know that. Those are siblings, apparently, oh, according wow. to Ultimania. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Makes sense. So, yeah, it does make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But they should have uh, made this clear there, and so or, or maybe yeah, more alluded yeah, there they because could have. I I don't remember dropping them any hints whatsoever that they are related. I don't think maybe no no I don't think so. I maybe just, I just remember it. seeing Andrea in the gym. Yeah, doesn't exactly. he work out and does pull ups at one point? He does. Yeah, and then he uh, he's the first one to challenge Tifa. Yes, so he was there, but they don't allude to no. being related i don't think i can't remember maybe there is something in the japanese script but in, it got lost hmm. in translation or something i don't know maybe that's interesting Hard to say yeah but yeah then um in chapter 15 i don't know chapter 15 is kind of 
while it was uh, the level itself purely from a gameplay perspective wasn't too bad but from a design perspective and story perspective was completely devoid of any meaning in, in my opinion it's like it's at the start, maybe, because you see, uh, you go through the debris and see people there and almost get buried by the, the collapsing uh, building. The beginning was cool, but after that, in my opinion, it was just going through empty space. Like, practically everything of, of the level design was just there to, for you to go there and, and yeah, do battles, battle your fights there, fight your battles. Was yeah. a little bit uh, really underused. It, it, there should have been more there, especially in the insides of the building, like remnants of uh, office space or something like that. Mm -hmm. Where and um, maybe some more dialogue between our trio uh, yeah. to maybe um, uh, kind of lament over the fact that there were uh, real people there who died, like not just those in the slums, but also those above the plate. I think this wasn't really addressed anywhere. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, it was... Kind All of, of those buildings were conveniently empty when they were yeah. destroyed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just Everything just poofed away. It was just thrown out of the window and it's just scattered around the place. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Unless Shinra evacuated everybody above the plate. But they don't show um, any of that. Too, too little time. It was too, f too fast. I don't <laughs> think uh, Reef was able to to do that. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. I, I think Reef even mentioned this uh, that there was so much, so much damage and so many lives lost. Even like like, like uh, the casualties would amount to fifty thousand people. Sector seven above and below, I think, or maybe just yeah. above. I don't know. So... It just showed them a little bit at the beginning, at the bottom, before you start ascending. Right? Yeah, exactly. But, but only that, nothing more. They sh they could have done a little bit more like what they did when the when the um first reactor, like the reactor, the first bombing mission like it explodes and then you see people <laughs> on the streets and somebody mm. is yeah, rolling exactly. around. There's exactly. ambulance there. Yeah, yeah. They just they could have done that when they were yeah. going up a little bit more cuz people need help because they were hurt or something inside of the office building like the office buildings even like you're going up and there's not really that much there's like no furniture Nothing. there's no like there's a few things but i agree yeah as as if everything has been abandoned completely and then they drop the plate but this isn't the case yes that's not the case yeah exactly yeah. Hmm. well i i think um the article i sent you before uh, also delves into um like chapter 16 17 18 and how they possibly had to cut things, uh, cut content out because of time constraints. And I also think oh, okay. in chapter 15, it's, it feels really unfinished, chapter 15, to me. Hmm. Kind of. I don't know. I just kind of get the feeling now that, that chapter 15 is purely a gameplay um, chapter. Because in the original, you do ascend or do climb up to Shin HQ. Of course, mm -hmm. we have to do this here too but maybe they didn't have the time to incorporate everything they wanted there, so they just kept it to gameplay only, and that's it. That's, that's my true. theory anyway. I think they, they a shame. had to cut things out because yeah. it, feels, it feels that way. Yeah, definitely. There's some things that are introduced to that they don't really stand by. Like, it's just, like, for example, there's, like, when uh, the... Heligunner is kind of coming after you, right? Mm -hmm. Don't they change the camera angle and then you're running away from it? But yeah. You kind of have to jump over stuff or like that sort of thing. But that that was the first time that we actually that whole thing was even introduced. Like, mm -hmm. and there were things that I wanted to chop up, but I couldn't because I was running away. But they still had like Shinra boxes and stuff like on there that you. Couldn't... Oh right, right. But you have to run away and you can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. But then I thought that it was going to be, you know, how sometimes there's like other games that kind of have this mechanic as well. And like you are running away and then you kind of hide behind something and then you can attack them, but they come up to the edge of. Ah, uh, right, right. Like Airbuster. 
that's this uh, far yeah, like away where something and comes destroyed. Close, like yeah. for example, it's in um, it's in uh, near Automata where there's a boss battle where it's like the rubble is around and stuff, and then it's destroying, and then it's just like you it comes to the area where you are, and you can actually like attack it. Yeah, exactly. While it's flying or something on mm. the edge, I thought that was what was going to happen. It didn't happen. That's fine, but. It's just I feel like there were they had more ideas and things yeah. to do in this area, and they were probably like, "Oh God, like we don't yeah. have enough time, so we just have to kind of clue it up now." <laughs> yeah, I think this was a weird design choice to put so many boxes there, and you had to run away and couldn't really do anything with those boxes. I want to kill to, to slice all those. Did you boxes feel like that the... too? Yeah, yeah this was I, so I weird. I really wanted to, and I was like, "Wait, can I?" And then I ran back, and the game. I think the game takes over and makes you run away or something, or you just die. I can't remember. I don't. I think you can't even run back. And then, yeah. then I tried to, like, just walk through the boxes and hope that uh, Heligoner <laughs> shoots them down. But I just got hit instead, so I okay. just kept running. It's 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 a really <laughs> weird segment. Also, before when it shows up the first time, the camera angle changes and you have to uh, run from uh, cover to cover. It's it's such oh, a yeah. weird, such a weird small time frame when you can go between or uh, jump yeah, from yeah. cover to cover, and if if it shoots, it just hits you so many times, and you go back to the previous cover. And again, this is so it it just didn't really feel uh, that there was too much uh, quality assurance gone into that. I think this uh, we yeah, had to I rush agree. this part definitely. It wasn't. It wasn't polished. This part is, is uh, especially the skybox. Seriously, but we talked about this last time. <laughs> we did, but I saw your Twitter post today that shows that they do have HD textures in those areas, right? Yeah, I, ret- I retweeted someone who um, I think got hold of of some of the files, and they were there, like they exist yeah. apparently on disk. So, but it's like a problem with yeah. Unreal Engine or something yeah, where probably. It's just, yeah. it fails to load. Yeah, most likely. Apparently this is a known issue with Unreal Engine 4, apparently. So yeah. on PS4, I think. Not yeah. on PC, I don't think. And PC even if it not, was, and... they said for PC, it would be super easy to fix. Yeah. And I also feel it's the, this is guy X Soldier from the, the, um, the livestream.net who wrote this article I sent you also mm-hmm. goes into this. and especially with uh, Unreal Engine 5 and the focus on next-gen stuff and Square Enix already preparing the Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 for next-gen. They said so in a previous interview, I think mm-hmm. a few months past. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I think this, this is uh, maybe a, an artifact of this or a, a kind of... Uh, how should I say this? You... If you prepare a project or a game for next yeah. gen already and maybe optimize a little bit more for that, and maybe then there are issues for current gen, especially if there are already issues with the engine, which gradually um, optimizes much more for a PC and next yeah. gen. Mm-hmm. This could be, and also they probably wanted to keep the frame rate at a steady yes. 30 FPS and no uh, and, and steady frame pacing. So they probably had the settings to um, prioritize frames, uh, frames, uh, frame pacing and probably. frame rate over anything yeah. else. So maybe they, that's why certain mm-hmm. assets just didn't load because the game thought, oh, well, then I will have less computational power for ensuring the 30 FPS, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. And then also everything with COVID happened and then the offices, I think, were closed and... Like, we still haven't got a patch. I'm, I'm hoping these yeah. things are going to be fixed in a patch. We don't know. But yeah. uh, I think a lot of people are working from home right now yeah. still. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, there are a few things that could happen also that uh, this person detailed in, in this article. Uh, either they just wait until they have uh, all the fixes and maybe even some additional content that I couldn't include in the later chapters. They f- uh, include this too and um, release everything at once, like uh, mm-hmm. f- uh, final patch, file mix patch, definitive yeah. patch, however you want to call this. Um, or they create this patch 
also with um, the outlook on the PS5 and to release this patch when the PS5 releases. So we have kind of a def definitive edition of the first game for the PS5, so that maybe people will then buy the game again, uh, buy the game or. Uh, buy the PS5 maybe because it's better there or something like that. I don't know. Maybe they have, have a, a deal uh, behind that. Although it's PS4 exclusive for a year, so they probably can't uh, release a PS5 version or something like that. Although they don't really need to. They, um, they only need to have uh, the PS4 version being more compatible with the PS5 version because the PS5 mm -hmm. version is or PS5 is backwards compatible. Yeah, and, exactly. And they so... said it, we, you don't even need to change the game or patch the game because PS5 will or PS4 games can utilize automatically the features of the PS5 or something like that. So maybe it's something like that. Well, if it's running on PS5 and it's not using emulation, I guess, but they would have to put that in there so that it can take advantage of the yeah, something upgraded like that, yeah. hardware. Yeah. yeah, but it's just a little unfortunate because I feel like we got the game, but we didn't get the best yeah, that's... 100% experience yet. And I think it's yeah. coming. And I think I that so. that's fine. It's fine. I love this game anyway. It's like my favorite game. But I just it's mean an, that it's an excuse to it's play just it not again. the definitive <laughs> yeah gameplay like when it comes out for pc i'm probably not even gonna get it for ps5 because i'm honestly just gonna get it on pc oh okay <laughs> that works too yeah because sure. that's what i usually do because i'm a pc gamer as well so i just hope we don't that version will be like the best of yeah. all of them but i just hope we don't have to pay for this patch but if this patch is as big as i hope it is we probably have to shell out like 10 euros yeah. dollars whatever we'll see how it goes anyway yeah. but yeah, I know what you mean. Just seeing like the pixelated sky and everything. Yeah. It's the same thing with me. I was a little disappointed. I'm like, oh my God, I know how beautiful this can look. It already yeah. looks so beautiful that it kind of took me out of the game a little bit. But yeah, especially in regards of content in the later chapters. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I myself didn't really notice that. But when thinking back, there was as, at a certain point, there was just cutscene boss battle, cutscene boss battle, cutscene boss battle. Mm -hmm. And way too much uh just running around and battles in the drum and too little actual story going on there like yeah it's you, you really need to read this article it's really interesting yeah i'll go back and i'll read it yeah and they they, they could do something like uh final fantasy 15's royal edition where he uh extended the final dungeon to the extreme there and mm -hmm. added a few other things of course it's bad for us who uh, paid full price for the for this version and later down the line yeah. we get a definitive version and those who haven't pay, uh, played the game yet or haven't bought the game yet probably uh, have to pay less than we have to pay like the full game plus those 10 or 15 whatever mm -hmm. maybe even 20 if they're greedy I don't know <laughs> yeah I, I'm just gonna I'm, I know I'm gonna buy it again on PC anyway so and I'll yeah. probably buy a PS5 at launch so I don't know. Probably too, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. This is the way I am. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because I love this game so much. It's I'm gonna pay it, right? Like some games, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't pay it multiple for multiple versions, you know? No. But I also have Xbox Game Pass as well, which is great. And I know Final Fantasy fifteen is on that. So it's All like right, I right, only yeah. pay like five ninety nine a month for that. And then I can play the definitive version of fifteen right now. So it might eventually come to that like years down the line, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, and uh, I still I still haven't gotten to Shin Rage Q, but I really need or want to uh, say a few things about this because this part is so great, so well done, looks good, has great uh, story beats, is fun, and why does have a few questionable decisions in terms of how they go about it like the, our characters i really love this whole thing so like stairs elevator both great i yeah. took the stairs first time which was there again they really went all out, all in on this it's just it's mm -hmm. not just running upstairs and uh, some banter but 
the banter really gets worse and worse the further you go up, especially Barrett's, and the music starts getting glitchy and weird, and Cloud gets slower <laughs> and slower, and it's really, ah, oh, come on, when are we there? Ugh. Yeah, it's, it's really well done. And I replayed chapters 16 and 17 uh, to find this post-game VR uh, dome or VR battle simulator. Right. Um, so that time I took the elevator and this was <laughs> uh, as hilarious. Especially yeah. this, this accountant that wanted to get in and Cloud just <laughs> sword, <laughs> sword tip right underneath the chin. And she, she just run out. <laughs> And the other one was on the phone with her, with his mom, and uh, went in there to uh, for I think forty to floor forty five or something, and it was just talking, didn't really acknowledge the other ones. Uh, the guy with the gun arm, a guy with a sword, and <laughs> just there talking to his mom. Go out, and Tifa's like, "Oh, I didn't know that uh, normal people worked there too, or something like that." It's it's really really great storytelling in this uh, elevator, but. Also, in the original, sometimes you ask why why aren't they surrounded like uh, ten minutes after they enter? Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course they they uh, they fight their way through it and everything, but still, yeah. this Shinra is such a big force; they should have been uh, apprehended at some point. And here it makes sense because Mayor Domino, he's uh, an avalanche sympathizer and the man mm -hmm. on the inside, and makes sure that uh, nothing is. Uh, ring any alarms or that it was false alarm or, or anything it's it's pretty good you, you can even see it um i think it's just at the start of the scarlet scene where this one uh, guard who's supposed to watch the monitors just looks away for a second you see cloud barrett and tifa i think uh, exiting uh or entering floor number 59 and then the feet just pssst, switches and you see nothing there. And you see, ah, oh, some, someone's doing something there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really well made. I love this part. And Mayor Domino, I don't know, he's just f so funny. <laughs> yeah, I liked him as a character. Yeah. And I didn't pay his assistant the extravagant amount of money, so I need to go back and do that yeah. because he gives you Barrett's like, last weapon or whatever. Yeah, right? same. I, I did so, yeah. of course, when I replayed Chapter 16, 17, so... I, mm. I do have him have it now. I thought, what? 10k for an advice? No, just screw you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, also, these, this cool uh, Crisis Core tie-in with console. Uh, console. Did you, did you uh, catch that? I did. I did. It's, it's, yeah. it's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, they, that's great. At first, I thought, oh, no. Now they're, they're, uh, they're caught. <laughs> and then... Oh, no, it's cool, it's cool. I went to train with him together. Yeah, it's cloud. exactly. <laughs> no worries. I'm going to go and get console. <laughs> so, <laughs> that yeah. was really good. And of course, Cloud had to block out, or his uh, subconscious had to block out the memories to keep his uh, persona alive. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. This was a nice addition. But what I was so mad about it that, that I didn't notice Red 13 um, after the fight against Specimen H50. Oh, really? Uh, uh, 0512. I didn't see it, no. I rewatched the footage I recorded and I always turn the camera in a way that I don't see it. Like, I usually do pan the camera all around the place to see it, but in, uh, uh, um, in this. This part of the wall or of the, the room where Red 13 was in, I kind of um, lowered the camera so I didn't see it. And then I, I, I um, moved the camera up again when I was way past him again. It's so weird. It's extremely weird. I was looking around the place. I was talking, but I never really... I didn't see him. It's so, it's so strange. And then... Stop it, phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you go upstairs, rescue Aerith, and then this uh, the shortage of of the opening mechanism, because apparently they're connected, uh, also opens Red 13's um, containment or container. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, wait, I've been in this room. Why didn't I see <laughs> that? Come on, no. <laughs> I was so mad at myself. Yeah, he's kind of 
he's not like bright. No, he's color just chilling either there. because where the glass from the containment cell is over his fur, so it's kind of like he's a little bluish, greenish. Yeah, you I don't think. see it that well. That's so true. he's you don't see him that well, so it doesn't stick out. No, I know. I I went up to him too, and I because I was like. I think this is the part where he is, so I'm gonna go up and look around. So I did see him, and I went up, yeah. went over to his cell, and he just there, kind of like sleeping, like he's laying down, and kind he's got of, his yeah. head like a dog, like his head is mm -hmm. just like on his paws, and then he kind of looks up and he like just kind of <laughs> looks around. Yeah, just apathetic. <laughs> Yet it, it it's like there's no story or anything, like no cutscene yeah. or anything like Nothing, that, or yeah. and they don't even acknowledge like nope. that he's there until which is you, weird like, but you did oh, what well. you did basically yeah, yeah. so because in the original tifa does uh tap the glass with his fingers oh look who's who's this what's that <laughs> so yeah. yeah i don't think that she does i don't think that she does that in this i don't think in the remake she, no, nobody does anything it's just yeah they're in front of the, of the elevator and you can walk around with cloud and just look at him but nothing happens that's a bit of a shame oh well so yeah, this uh, oh that the fire five I already uh, mentioned before, but this was such a hilarious moment. <laughs> um, anyway, the drum I mentioned before, in my opinion, it was kind of cool, like being a, a lab rat and stuff, and it's uh, the switching between the parties with the BHS and the battle against uh, Swordy Pete was pretty cool too, but it was too long and just too much. Too much of nothing. Like there were there were a few cool cool moments between the characters, where, especially when uh, Aerith and Tifa were walking around and fell down the pipe and woke up the Senenes. It was a pretty cool mm -hmm. moment. But all in all, nothing really of any significance happens there. Like if there were a few moments with Hojo and and Red going after him and being uh, put in place by the brain part, there was pretty a pretty cool moment. And I think the only actual cutscene the other ones were just uh, talking cutscenes so it's yeah it was a little bit a little bit too long it should have it should have been done a little bit more with this part i also think this is due to lack of time to flesh everything out um yeah that's that's i think that's about it boss battles i don't know most of them i i just dropped the ball there had some problems with the sample H0512. Uh, had pro real problems with uh, Rufus. Had problems with uh, Arsenal fight because I sh uh, kept shooting at the, the wheels until I noticed, oh, there they have a shield up. So, yeah, I this, this part sometimes wasn't really uh, kind to me. Yeah, and what I also found uh, quite strange that... Uh, well, I didn't mind the different color of uh, the Trail of Blood. Mm -hmm. Kind of nothing happens there. It's We see it, we uh, walk along it up to the president's office. But the floor of 69, just nothing happened there. It was just there. Of course, in the original, nothing happens either. But here, they could have uh, probably fleshed it out a little bit. Or, yeah. Uh, maybe you did notice it too, but when uh, before we entered the elevator to floor 69, uh, I think Red 13 says that, uh, are you sure you want to proceed because you can't return there? You need to get, if you want to do it now, you have to get your businesses in order. And I thought to myself, mm -hmm. wait, what can I do there here that I didn't before? The only thing yeah, is maybe, exactly. go, maybe go down to floor 63 to the cafeteria and... Uh, do some battles, maybe go back to Chadley, but that's about it. Which is also mentioned in this the Lysim.net article that this alludes to much more content uh, where you can go back to maybe even some side stuff. I don't know. It really feels like there's so much cut there. Yeah, you can't go back. It says that, but the, then I tried to go back, and you can only go back so far. I don't. Yeah, think it doesn't really matter back. anyway because there's nothing to go back to. <laughs> there's a door that doesn't open. Ah, I see. That's oh, like right, permanently right. shut. Should... You can't go back. I tried I see. it because yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, wait, maybe I forgot something. So then I went back, and those test subject things just continuously respawn in that room. Ah, I see. Yeah, I've, and you I, can't I know go back you're... past that. And I was yeah. like, oh, 
it's That's it's strange. weird. Why does it say that? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's because if you wanted to go back and maybe just fight the test subjects and like level up your material a little bit more and gain more AP, it's kind of like the last area before you go up to the maybe, top. Maybe yeah. That's what I did because I had some of the design skills that I didn't have unlocked yet. Yeah, like, right, right. The proficiency wasn't a hundred percent, and I wanted them to be before see, the yeah. end. Okay. So, but yeah, there's no quests or no items yeah. or anything like that, and you can't go back. So it, it, this design felt weird. Well, on my first playthrough, I didn't really pay too much attention, but when going back and also thinking about it after hearing other people talk and reading this article, when you really think about it, there's just so much missing there and so much mm -hmm. opportunities lost. So yeah, that's that's really true. Um, the escape. This was at first I thought was a bit, little bit over the top, but uh, at the end I thought, well, this is pretty cool, pretty well made. Also with so much, uh, so much humor, because Cloud just plows through all those uh, poor infantrymen. <laughs> yeah, that that was that and was almost great. hits Heidegger. It. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah. Also, people think that this uh, this uh, grunt at the window where Cloud throws his sword against is probably the same one that noticed noticed him on floor sixty three. Oh. That's probably why he didn't harm him. Hmm. It could probably. Be, it could be something. But, well, you don't know because all of them uh, look exactly the same, so it's hard to tell. That's true. They do. Yeah. There's a few times as well where the you know the um. There's one in sector, I think it's sector seven slums, isn't it? There's an area where you can't go to, and there's like yeah, those two go two guards, yeah, yeah. One of them is young, so he's yeah. just starting out, exactly. And he doesn't do what. And there's other times throughout the story when that guy actually helps you because he's like, no, yeah. yeah. After and the other guy's like, him. I gave you an order, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Th those are great. I forgot to mention mm -hmm. those. Those are really minor NPCs that are so much so good. They were already in the original, but had just a few lines which had the same mm -hmm. sentiment, like the the rookie and the senior. Yes. But uh, other than that, nothing much more. But here in the remake, they went all in with those. Again, mm -hmm. practically everything they touched went all in, except that those parts uh, they had to cut due to time constraints. Mm -hmm. Then you, you really see the, the voidness of content. Oh, well. Uh, how, how did you feel about the... Uh, the last, the escape itself, like the the bike chase sequence, the last one. I really enjoyed it, but I thought that the boss battle was really long. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Too long. And I was like, I'm going to run out of highway. <laughs> yeah. Like this, this highway is going to end before yeah. I kill this boss. Yeah. Most likely, yeah. <laughs> and maybe that's a good thing, because then the boss would just fly off the edge. Which he does, but he, we you need to kill him for or uh, disable him yeah. first. Yeah. Too bad though. Too bad you just can't like not attack him and just drive and see if he flies yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I did. I did check uh, footage again, and I once died like at the very end. And yeah. Then I repeated it, and I know uh, knew how to tackle it, and I thought I would. I, I did pretty well, and I uh, used my attacks pretty efficiently. But I still, it still took me seven and a half minutes for only. The motor ball or motor, yeah. however it's called, it's just too mm -hmm. too long, too much HP. I did like the escape sequence. I loved that, and oh, I love sure. the fact that the rest of the crew were beside me yeah. in a different vehicle, like in the original. Mm. And I love that Red Thirteen just kept talking to me and trying to heal me and help. Yeah. Those scenes I themselves were pretty cool. Yeah, the scenes themselves were great, but yeah, some battles. Mm. A little bit drawn out. Half the HP and I'm done. I I'm I'm good with it. I'm down with it. Yeah. Half HP yeah. and it's good. Yeah, I staggered that thing like I don't know. I think I got to a thousand percent. <laughs> you did? I think mine was only six hundred and something and uh before it died. Six hundred twelve oh, or I don't know. It was high. I was yeah. like, How was high, high yeah. can this go? How are you still <laughs> alive? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. It would have been cool, like I said on the last episode, if they changed the gameplay element a little bit, or maybe because when you're on a bike, like you 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 have so you have so much limited um, attack. Yeah, it, it, I like can't attack do much, abilities yeah. that you can mm -hmm. use. You can't use everything that you've used, so it's kind of boring. Yeah, where they could have maybe 
added a few other things that you can do. I know it's really hard, like obviously Probably, how, how yeah. you're going to use magic or something, yeah. but it would have been cool if you could cast like thunder or something. I don't know. Maybe the your allies are that are or, driving yeah, or yeah, exactly. doing something to help, I, like issue commands throwing, to your allies, throwing grenades or something at it. Yeah. Um, like I had grenades in my inventory. I don't know. I'm just trying to think here, like how they could have. Not everybody feels like we do. So some people love it 100, percent which is fine. But yeah, I liked it yeah. too. It's still it. It felt a little bit restrictive, especially if you're on this highway for let's say 20 minutes or something, and keep keep hitting and hitting and hitting those mm -hmm. those things yeah. at the say uh, with the same attack. Sorry, I like the idea that you said like you could still issue them attack um, like you still had an ATV system and you could issue them attacks like your other party members that are mm. driving with you maybe and it uses an ATV but they got rid of the ATV altogether for that yeah. section, right? Because you only have a square and a triangle button to use abilities, so. I th it was, was X used? I don't think X was used there. Maybe it, it could No, have... I said square and triangle. Yes, I mean a square and a triangle was the special attack and square and yes. circle was Just... the left right but x wasn't used i think so they could have used uh done something to x that's what i was getting at because oh. uh yeah like uh hit x hmm. and then maybe 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 just initiate an attack uh for the other ones maybe barrett shooting or some or barrett shooting something special like uh his triangle attack so to speak and this also had a cooldown, like like a triangle cloud special, mm. uh, X uh, Barrett special or something. And both had a cooldown. I don't know. But maybe this yeah, would have been too true. much. I don't know. But they use the trigger buttons for uh, break and break speed and up. Exit, so, uh, yeah, yeah acceleration. accelerator, whatever. So that took over the whole, like, switching the party commands and yeah. taking them over to... So I understand, exactly. but yeah, X would have been cool. Maybe if it was just like an ability from from the others. Aerith was in there. Tifa was driving. Red uh, doesn't have any long range, so Barrett maybe. Th though Barrett mm. does shoot on its own, but on his own, but mm, don't think it does much. <laughs> they could have given us maybe a uh, simpler command menu. Maybe yeah. Uh... You press it, and then it's there, and you can just use magic. Or throw items, like grenades. Yeah. I had, I had so many of those stuffed animal things from the Coliseum. All right, yeah. <laughs> that I never even used. Mr. Cuddlesworth or something. I Why couldn't I throw Mr. Cuddlesworth at it? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Would, would have been that fun. would have been cool, <laughs> yeah. imagine. Definitely. Let's just add oh, summons to it. Like, why not? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Send Ifrit after Motorball. Yeah. Or the chopper. Shiva could just fly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> or Bahamut. <laughs> or Fat Chocobo rolling along on the highway. <laughs> I never had Bahamut when I played. Well, you don't get him till later. No, so. no, it's, it's, it's post-game stuff. You can't get Bahamut <laughs> anyway. Oh, or can you get, it, get him before? I don't think so. Wait, no, nah, I think you can because um, you need to complete all the other uh, battle intel quests and i only had the one which you had to master 12 green materia and if you do this before the game ends i think you can also battle behind because, because as soon as as i finished this this one immediately bahamut appeared so i don't th I, I think you can even uh, get him before oh. the game ends I, I, yeah i, I should try I didn't have Rays maxed. Yeah, it same. Was like, <laughs> same. I think it's uh, five stars, right? Uh, no, it's just two, but it, it, it takes like 5,000 AP or something to level up. It's just one level up, like it has two stars, Rays oh, and Arise, okay. but it needs so many AP. Just too yeah, much. Yeah, I think I had 2,900 and I was like, yeah. mm, well, I, I can go on or I can continue to kill these respawning experiment things yeah. to try to get more ap and i had the ap up yeah same elemental material that was attached to it so. yeah but still too little yeah oh well all right guys so we're gonna end this episode there so i just want to say thanks so much to everybody for you know continuing to support the podcast and also listening right till the end and you know what there's so much to talk about for this game 
And there's so many things that, you know, we want to say. And sometimes we don't actually get a chance to talk about everything because, you know, it's pretty much impossible because there's so, so many things that we can go in depth about for this game. So we are going to go ahead and stop this episode now. And I just want to say stay tuned for our part three episode for our complete spoiler cast. We will be going in depth about the ending, uh, plot of the game, any theories and our predictions for where they, they may take the story in the subsequent parts for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And uh, we'll be able to deep dive a lot more into those theories and predictions on the next episode. All right, guys. So if you have any questions, you can write us at the reunion podcast at gmail.com. That's the reunion podcast at gmail.com. You can also send us your suggested topics uh, to that email as well if you would like us to cover a certain topic about the remake in our next episodes. You can also join our Discord. We do have a Discord server and the link is always posted in the episode description. All you have to do is click on the link and you will be instantly invited to join our Discord. So if you love this game as much as we do, we really think that you should join the um, Reunion Podcast Discord. It's a great way to talk about this game that we love with other people that also love this game and uh, just continue the conversation in a different method. So we do have a Twitter account. It's at Reunion underscore podcast. Our Facebook is also at Reunion Podcast. And we do have a YouTube channel and we post our episodes to our YouTube channel. It's the Reunion Podcast. We do have an Instagram account as well. It's the Reunion Podcast. And Viz, did you want to go ahead and drop your socials for Cosmo Canyon Observatory? Sure. It's uh, just search for Cosmo Canyon Observatory on YouTube or uh, type in my name, Vizuasath, if you know how to spell this. <laughs> you, uh, I think you should also be able to find me there. And on Twitter, I have a private account, so, uh, Vizuasath. Good luck spelling this. Uh, <laughs> but the, the company account, so to speak, is at cc underscore observatory. And our Discord is also called Cosmo Canyon Observatory. And the invitation link should be in the description, I think, for this, for this podcast. Mm -hmm. So if you guys haven't checked out Viz and the Cosmo Canyon Observatory and all of his amazing content, you really should. It's an incredible community. And I just love being part of your Cosmo Canyon Observatory community. And also, you know, we have our own community here on the podcast. And it's been incredible getting to know a lot of you amazing fans of this game out there. It's, it's been awesome. Definitely, yeah. All right, guys. So this is Kairosis. I am signing off. And hopefully we will uh, talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and take care. Bye, guys. Bye.